be come out pretty yeah. well. Don't, right? don't forget to turn it on and off again. <laughs> we tried to get on and off again. <laughs> oh my! You know what? I'm not even going to say that anymore. <laughs> you are, in fact, watching the Dorkening. You're watching Animated. the Dorkening. Stay tuned. For all the geek news everywhere, Dorkening. And this is the Dorkening. Trust me, I'm smarter than these guys. Because the Dorkening is the best and most educational entertainment and information source that uh, the trauma team knows of. It's the best. The Dorkening. Everyone thinks because you're a zombie, you don't know good coffee. Well, they're wrong. There's only one brew that gets my seal of approval. Deadly Grounds coffee is my guilty pleasure. The aroma is so intoxicating. It brings all of my neighbors out of the woodwork. Deadly Grounds coffee. Coffee Leo to die for and zombie approved. It's good to get a little deadly. Use the front door! Oh, they're so disgusting. Hey, hey, yes, Drew, I know we were live. The commercial was playing. <laughs> uh, hey, welcome, uh, okay. everybody, to Splash Pages. My name is Leo. I'm the monkey behind the keyboard here. We have a killer show for you today. Absolutely love it. This is, I'm so excited about it. Uh, but we have Jar Jar. How's it going, bud? Hey, welcome back. Oh, welcome. <laughs> uh, Justin. Hey, when does that movie come out? I think it's called Splash Pages. Damn. Oh. oh, you love it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it took me a long time to put that together. Mr. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to wait for the Snyder cut of Smash Pages. Maybe that'll be better. You a lot know, of slow motion. Four and a half hours oh, wow. of cameos. <laughs> a lot of slow motion. A lot of, a lot uh, of questionable actors. Moving on. Yeah. Velvet, how's it going? What's up, guys? It you know what time it is? It's Tuesday night, so that much beats. It's time for Splash Pages. 
podcast, a comic book club. And tonight we have a super exciting guest that we're so excited about. <laughs> Tonight's guest is a journeyman actor, mm -hmm. a husband and father, a voiceover artist that has been part of some legendary television and movies, a vital part of one, two, three, four nerd related properties. Hero to children everywhere, whether you know him as Barry from Friends, Stan from My Cousin Vinny, Donatello from TMNT, Uwe Gablui from Doc McStuffins, or his most current character for 75 episodes, Demi on Vampirina, the great, the amazing, the talented, Mitchell Whitfield! Yay! Wow, what an intro, thank you. Wow, yeah, the, the crowd's going crazy. <laughs> thank yeah. you guys for having me. Oh, thank you for giving us your time. Hey, Rich, is it only four nerd properties? Oh, it's, it's a lot a... more than that. Yeah, I think there's because you got Legend of Korra. TMC, yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> uh, d d d I can't even name them all right. You know now, what dude. though? I think it depends on how how deep a dive into nerddom you're willing to go to rate. Oh, uh, you know what I mean? Zach and Cody, The Sweet Life. I mean, oh boy, yep. can't escape that. God help me, I, I, yeah. dude. You were on when my kids were watching it, so I got to watch you. It was kind of interesting. Can, can I tell you something? Can I start off with like a, a fairly upsetting story, real quick? Oh okay. yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, my, I went to Colgate University back in the back in the mid '80s, um, and I hadn't it. spoken to my college roommate in years. Okay, Set the uh, and I had and I had done a bunch of as you as you so eloquently said a bunch of movies, a bunch of TV shows over the years, and had my own series a bunch of times, and done a bunch of films. And I did this one, or I guess it was a two part episode of Zach and Cody, right? And which has become uh, unfortunately very well known. And uh, I get this call out of the blue from my college roommate saying. Mm -hmm. Hey man, it's been a while. It's been decades. Hey, but I just saw you on Zach and Cody, and I was like, "Oh, that that's cool, man." It's like, you know, I did like a bunch of movies and TV shows. You know, like <laughs> Friends, my cousin Vinny, a bunch of movies that people remember. You really get in touch with me from Zach and Cody. That's when, after decades, you decide that it's time to reach out and say congratulations. That's He's like, "Well, you know, we have it. kids, and they were really." I was like, "Oh man." That's when I knew something bad was happening. So yes, it, that that episode or those two episodes follow me everywhere, and it's cool because whatever people remember me for is always great. But I'm always surprised. Like that's what people remember. I guess that's cool. So <laughs> it's just, just one of those weird things. So yes, Zach and Cody, I should just embrace it. Absolutely. It, it's mainly because once we make that jump into parenthood, it's like our yeah. whole lives, like. I got to watch a kid last night go speak in front of the mayor of my town, and I was like, I'm wicked proud. I'm like, hey. But, yeah, Zach and Cody, it's where it's at. You made it. Lost, baby. Lost. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, Mitchell, in promoting this um, interview after you, you accepted, of course, we promoted it all, all over the place that we could and because uh, we are big fans of yours. And a parent reached out to me and said that they're a huge fan of Demi. Oh. And they wondered uh, if you could, as Demi, just say hello or good evening to Nora and Thea. Well, it's very easy for me to say good evening to Nora and Thea. Hope you enjoy the show and our deep dive into nerddom everywhere. Wow. You know, I realize I sound like a combination only... of Paul Lind and I don't know what, but Demi's yeah. always fun to do. I feel like the Mayor McCheese, that's who he sounds like. That, was, good that, that just cost us. <laughs> that, that was phenomenal. I, I think you scared Drew uh, uh, off. <laughs> You know what? But it's so funny when you do voice work. I think one of the amazing things about, and I feel very fortunate to be been able to do voices for years. I started over forty years ago, and the great part of it, one of the joys of it, is the anonymity, which as an actor is huge because we're used to being always judged by this. When you step into a room to audition for a film, uh, TV show it doesn't matter. The second you step into the room, you're immediately before you even say a word, you're being judged on what you look like, and that's just mm -hmm. the nature of the beast. So. I can still look like this and sound like that or sound like, you know, come on, Calabunga, dude, or sound like a turtle or sound like a teenager. And the illusion, because it's just your voice, is brilliant. But I think there's a certain disconnect when people see you. It's sort of like reading a book, imagining your own version of that character, and then seeing that character in the movies all of a sudden. It's like, wait a minute. I didn't imagine that being that. And I think it's the same thing when sometimes you see the voices behind those animated characters. So it always kind of, sometimes I'll cover my face so people are like, oh yeah, now I know who you are. Because <laughs> it can be there is, that there is a little bit of a disconnect between that voice and the image that you see on screen. Very cool, very cool. Is this now, part um, of a book while you're talking to him? <laughs> exactly, don't look at me, just hear me. <laughs> now Mitchell, I was yeah. just curious. Now I was not a huge Friends fan per se, 
Um, but I was curious uh, for the episodes that you did, did it bring any positivity or negativity to your life, whether that be via your career or your personal life? Well, there were several episodes, actually. Yeah. Uh, no. Um, so, yeah. So I was I a was Friends the... fan, by or, the way. Were you really? And, yeah. yeah you're hated in the Friends community. You know, it's. <laughs> I, I think it's sort of like the character you love to hate, I'd like to think, because I have people you well, know, yeah. stop me in the street and say, hey, you're that jerk from Friends. And I'm like, <laughs> yes. I mean, what else do you say other than a big yes with a smile? And like I said, sort of embrace it. Um, so I don't know if you guys know about this, but I was actually up for the role roles of ross and chandler and oh, it was no down problem. between me and one other guy for the role of ross at the very end and that one other guy was david schwimmer so and it came it was which worked out perfectly because he was amazing and perfect for that role and i never looked back and thought oh poor me because i had done other stuff and moved on it was great but because they knew me from auditioning for those roles that's why they offered me the part of barry actually on the series and you know i'd say uh yeah i think it only affected my life positively because like like we were talking about, any way that people know you, whether it's from Zach and Cody, or I have to say it like that from now on. Every, when I'm talking normally, I'd say Zach and Cody. Um, whether it's from Zach and Cody or from that character in Friends, um, I think it's only a positive. Again, people uh, embrace the show. They love the show. And it's become, here we are decades later talking about it. And I've been really super fortunate to be a part of like a few things that have had some legs that years and decades later people still talk about. So there's never really a downside to that sort of thing. Even if your character is kind of a lovable jerk, let's, let's go with lovable jerk. So yeah, no, it's, it's been, it's been wonderful. And I guess, you know, work always breeds work and people see you on one show. It's okay. Let's go. I remember him. Let's bring him in for this. So there was always that positive sort of uh, you know, that, that rolling factor of having one role propel you into another. And especially when there's high visibility in a, in a series like there was with friends. So it was all good. It was only positive. Awesome. Very cool. So uh, uh, j just real quick. Uh, sure. uh, so sorry, Drew. Um, we, we were actually talking about friends the other day where like growing up, you know, uh, I won't say my age, but I'm, I'm getting up there and like 25. <laughs> growing up there, you know, my comfort show was like Cheers and, and, you yeah. know, and Nash and Norm. whatnot. Uh, but, you know, it, awesome. we're, wow. <laughs> I was actually on Blossom too, so we won't you even were, go there. <laughs> Uh, we won't even for, go there. For a whole generation, Friends has become that comfort oh, show. That's like that. uh, six degrees of separation from Blossom. Oh, wow. That's pretty interesting. Creepy. No, but that's you're, you're right. You, know, you mentioned comfort show. And I think, especially in times like today where the world is, um, can I say shit show? Oh, yeah. Um, sure. Please where do. Things, where things are not great and we're trying to get better as hopefully as a planet and as a country and as just in general. Uh, I think having those things that give you joy, and I've talked about this before, just getting joy from different things. From me, like, you know, there's so many, like, my nerddom of collecting uh, hot toys and board games and video games. Oh, and really? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, we, oh. we, can, we, can, we, can, we, can, we can dive deep, I promise. So, so <laughs> having those things that give you joy and those comfort shows, for me especially, if I'm in the office unboxing a board game or, you know, putting a new head and pair of hand positions on the hot toys, whatever I'm doing, I'll have my my guilty pleasure or comfort shows which are always seem to be fringe fringe is one of my favorite all-time shows oh, that's yeah. a really fringe. cool show it's such it's such a great show and even though it's incredibly deep and requires attention and once you've seen it 10 times through like i have i have it on the back in the background and i'm doing other things and for a lot of people you don't even have to be sitting there just you know actively engaged in your favorite thing whatever it is you can just sit there and have it sort of flowing all over you in the room and it just gives you that it's it is it's a it's a form of comfort like anything right. else and I, that's just sort of like a passive way of getting joy, you know, when you're when you're sitting and winding down during the day. So I totally get it. And if, like I said, the fact that I'm a part of some of those, it's mind blowing. It's crazy. But I have my comfort shows, too, that I go. It's never friends, though. That'd be too self-serving. If I was on my own comfort show or if it was my own movie, I'd be like, oh, that's creepy. That's why I watch other people's. And if you're like, do you watch ah. your own stuff? I'm like, not that often. I'll go, oh, look how young and thin he was. Look at all that hair. Then I'll click it off. But otherwise, yeah, no, I oh, get God, it. The I'm comfort so show is big. <laughs> Please. As I'm like, do you consider um, print? Uh, sorry, go for it, Drew. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, well, I, I want you to finish your train of thought. This yeah, I, I, I was just going to say, do you consider Fringe a like offshoot of X Files? I could have sworn, like the first or second episode, they mentioned X Files. Did they? I, I think they did. They make an actual reference to it. Um, I don't remember. I mean, I think spiritually, a lot of people would say, oh, it's just an extension of that. 
but it's it's no. an extension of that other than that it's a bureau of the government that's in you know investigating weird stuff that can't be explained uh but that's i think where the two shows part yeah. drastically um i didn't get i didn't get into uh i didn't get into both shows i really only got into fringe and it even took me a second watch to you know i stopped after the four, fourth or fifth episode and i was like mm, i'll come back to it came back to it a year or two later and then i just went nuts so i think if there there are certain shows that are a little harder to get into and you if everyone listening comes upon a show like that some of them are definitely worth revisiting because it takes that second watch maybe being in a different mind space or just oh okay okay i get it and then once you once that train starts going ooh yeah but uh yeah i'm sure i think spiritually i would consider the shows adjacent but I don't know if it's supposed to be an exact offshoot, but yeah, I, I, I definitely get the, I definitely get the comparison. Yeah, I thought they made a comment, Leo, about like the X Files in there, like the X Files existed as a show in that. One of my favorite That's... actors of all time is on that show, Eric the actor. He passed away. Oh my God! You're from the Howard Stern show, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember uh, watching his head explode in the subway. Exactly. I know the exact episode. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Is it, will there be remuneration when he wants to watch the thing and he wants some money? Oh, I remember yeah, the yeah. scene. I think I remember probably oh, all the dialogue great. in every episode, which is a little sad and funny. But oh wow, sad. This is fantastic. <laughs> Who would you cast yourself as then? Ooh, there you go. In, in what show? Any show? In in Fringe. In, uh, Fringe. Well, any show too. But I oh, mean, in it's Fringe. Like, you know. Oh, you know what? That's mm. when I was watching that show. I was hoping there was a part of it that I could just whatever part it was, a guest star, whatever, anything to be in that show. And it didn't happen. I think it's like that with some of my favorite shows. I was never asked to be part of some of the shows that I love, which is really fine because I don't look at when I and I think family and friends are more likely to see oh you would have been great now why aren't you in that show which is like the funniest question oh i'll get on it right now i'll make sure i'm in that show yeah. <laughs> like it happens that way um but i think i love the fact that i can just enjoy those shows from a distance and not feel that attachment to them like viscerally like i was a part of it because i probably wouldn't watch it as much if i were on them i would just it would be a very different sort of dynamic with me in the show um but oh man i would have i they could have cast me in anything in fringe and I, I would have been thrilled i mean the one part would have been you know the observer would have been a little tough with the with the eyebrow makeup and the shaved head <laughs> yeah. or the you know prosthetic yeah. most of them shave their head for it but uh yeah I, they could have cast me as anything in fringe i i would have been one of walter bishop's treat holders i would have given him like his <laughs> cotton candy whatever he wanted to eat and just feed him that would have been enough for me uh, Mitchell, in in '94, you um, something m way more obscure of yours. You worked on the George Carlin show with the yes. Indians, of course, oh, George man. Carlin. You played nice. Brian yeah. for that episode. What can you tell us about your experience working with George Carlin at that it point? Was, it was amazing because I grew up. Um, I, I would guess I'm the oldest of the bunch here. Uh, I grew up. Um, you know, I was yes. born in the early '60s. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll be pushing sixty here and. So I grew up listening to George Carlin albums and, you know, back when, you know, listening to comedians albums was, you know, I don't know if people still do that anymore because, um, you know, everything is streamable and you can watch concert footage. But listening to the albums growing up, that's how I listened to George Carlin. And then, of course, watching his specials. So I already was a huge George Carlin fan and it was sort of a surreal experience being on the set with him as sort of a fan and you can't help it. Even as a fellow actor, you have those you know, fan boy, fan girl, fan person moments where you're just sitting there like, I want to sit with George Carlin and hoping it doesn't, you don't have that shit eating grin on your face and look silly while you're just, you know, fanning out. But it was amazing. And uh, I didn't have much to do. I was like a guest star on the show. I didn't have much to do, but I remember on their set, um, they had these brownstone stoops. If I remember carefully, they had this set that sort of looked like where I grew up in Greenwich village in, in Manhattan in New York where by Washington Square Park, they had these stoops and it looked a lot like where I grew up. So I felt very comfortable there. And it gave me that New York feeling, of course, being with him on the set. And it was just great. As a George Carlin fan, I, I loved every second of it. I got to spend some time with him. He was great. Such an easygoing, such an easygoing, generous guy, especially to act with. And uh, it was it was amazing. It, again, a little surreal for me, but amazing. Very That's cool. crazy. Hey, so. I had one question. So I know uh, bringing up my cousin Vinny, which we, we talked about when we met um, a bit. Um, I know that Joe Pesci reprised the character for his 1998 album, the Vincent LaGuardia Gambini song sings for you. Um, and he wore the same suit, which still cracks me up to this day. The usher, the, right. the usher suit. Um, you know, do you, as an actor, do you guys ever listen to your movie soundtracks? Do you ever like, 
sit down and listen and you think, hey, I remember when this song was playing. Like, you know, do you ever, like, as an actor? No, I didn't No, go ahead. No, no, it's like, as an actor, do you ever, like, you know, later on, you're like, oh, yeah, this is a movie soundtrack. Like, I, like, like you were in Team NT, and, you know, I was a pretty big fan of that soundtrack. Yep, that guy right there. Yeah, Bigger fan than me. You, um, <laughs> you know, like, the music is really great, and music is such a big part of movies. So, right. like, do actors listen to their own soundtracks? I, I, I don't. I Let's put it this way. I have like a different take on that question because it's a great question. I, I don't go out of my way to listen to the soundtracks that often. Again, mm -hmm. I tend to listen to the soundtracks of other movies more than my own. Okay. Because having I because I've probably heard the soundtracks from my own movies more than anything else. Right. So but what does happen for me is again, and I use the word visceral a lot because there are certain things that will affect you viscerally. Mm -hmm. Um smell, temperature, sound, and you know, even like wherever I happen to be, I've, I've lived now in California longer than I've lived in New York, which is really a weird thing as a New York guy. But mm -hmm. um, I mean, you could have like a, a cool breeze hit you and all of a sudden you have this reaction like, oh, I remember growing up and me being on, you know, being on the corner of 38th Street and I had this feeling. So certain things bring you instantly back somewhere. And I think music and sound is one of those things. So what will happen is sort of a roundabout way of answering your question. I will hear a song from something that I did. And it'll be right. on the radio. It'll be in some other form of life where I will hear it. And I'm instantly not just brought back to the movie, but brought back to when we shot that scene that the, that that music was attached to remembering everything that happened that day. Mm. And that happens a lot. It happens a lot for Dogfight, which is one of the lesser known movies that I did. Um, it was an incredible experience. And I, I talk about a great soundtrack. If you ever go pick up the soundtrack for Dogfight, woof, great music. Again, it's different. Um, but uh, so I will hear music from a movie that I've done. And instead of like sitting, oh, I'm going to go listen to that soundtrack. It just instantly brings me back to actually shooting the movie, making the TV show. So it's that strong a connection. And that's mm -hmm. what I go back to. So I don't often go back and listen to the individual individual soundtracks, but I'm still affected when I hear it instantly okay. by it. So uh, and again, another question about my sure. cousin, Vinny, because, you know, you and Ralph Macchio's character um, are essentially arrested because you accidentally um stole a can of tuna yeah um how are your feelings on tuna now and have fans actually brought a can for you to sign i you know i was when we met uh in rhode island mm. um i actually was given oh no i'm blowing up on instagram uh is that one of you uh uh so i was actually finally brought a can of tuna to sign for the first time and it sort of made my agent say you know what? When we go to these things, we should bring a shitload of tuna cans. You can sign a book. And I was like, that's actually a funny idea because it's not something I would ever have thought of myself. But fans have asked about it and asked particularly about that moment. I even joke mm -hmm. with Ralph about it still. So, you know what? I did finally. And I also signed my first green car from oh, the movie, the actual wow. replica of the car. Nice. Oh, nice. So I signed that for the first time too, although but getting getting a bunch of those would probably be cost prohibitive, but getting oh, yeah. a bunch of tuna, mm -hmm. even if I go to Costco and get the Kirkland tuna, who cares? Signature well, signature. Oh, those tuna, cans right? are like this <laughs> big, man. You could feed a family of 12. That's one Guy thing. walks so, out. Oh, I'd be hell. like signing it like this, right? Um, yeah, okay. uh, my relationship with tuna has always been good, <laughs> although it sort of has a laxative-like effect on me, TMI, I know, but if, if we're putting it out there, uh, I, I, all I have to be to stay regular is have a tuna sandwich and I'm good to go for a week. So there you go. I have a very complicated gastro relationship with tuna, but I'm not really upset by the idea of the, you know, the, the, the horrors of being arrested for stealing one. I think I've gotten over it all these years later. So now the other thing is that when we first met at Rhode Island and I said your, said your character's name correctly, you were stunned because apparently that doesn't happen often. So how often do you correct people? about the Steens and the Steins. You know what? I only do it for fun, really, because <laughs> because I do it in the movie. And right. I don't know if we... Did we talk about this in Rhode Island that I told you that was no, an ad lib? No, okay. you, 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 we were just so impressed that you you juror tapped me. You're like, good job. And I was <laughs> exactly. just like, mm, try not to so, laugh here. <laughs> so that that was actually not in, the, not in the movie. The Steen Stein thing was not in the movie. It was an ad lib mm. that I did during one of my takes. Because, you know, for the people that don't know how the process works, you, you'll shoot the same scene. I always tell people, you know, people want to go on the set and watch movie making or watch a television show being made. It's the most boring thing in the world. Right. Um, you're just sitting around a lot and you shoot. You tend to shoot the same scene multiple times. 
from multiple angles. Sometimes it's a master shot with everyone in the scene. Then you have the close-ups of the individual actors to get their reactions. Then you'll have over-the-shoulder shots, two shots. So you're doing the scene over and over again. So it's always interesting as an actor, you understand why people want more control over editorial process and things like that, because the movie's really made once you're gone, once you've gone home, the director Uh and the editor sit there and they can take multiple versions of that scene and cut it against multiple versions of the other scene. You could have a whole different movie. So you never know what's going to happen. Right. So we're doing that scene over and over again. And finally, she says my name and I'm I'm annoyed at this point. I turned to Ralph. She's Dean. It's. Stein and I got annoyed and, I, and Ralph looked at me like I was an idiot because here we are on trial for our lives being arraigned and I'm more concerned with how she's mispronouncing my name and it ended up staying in the movie which I thought was really fun so when people end up liking that moment I'm like oh, my ad libs oh. you know that little <laughs> sprain myself patting oh, myself yeah. on the uh, strain myself patting myself on the back but uh, yeah that was that was super cool so when I correct people it's more correcting them like like I did in the movie more than me getting offended by it but I was still very impressed by the pronunciation. Credit. Could have been a lawyer. Got it. Okay, great. Uh, 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 Rich, did you have a question? I assume called you have a question. Um, yeah, of course, I have, yeah. I have plenty of questions. But, oh, I know um, that. I, I, you came with a book. Um, <laughs> oh, right, right. Oh, for Mitchell. Oh, for Mitchell. Oh, okay. right. Yeah, yes, that guy. Yes, right. Well, yes. actually, Mitchell, um, we just watched um, my Harley and I your curb your enthusiasm episode. Oh, yeah. Where where you get the botched baptism. Oh. And yeah, uh, you inadvertently oh started a rift between the Jews and the Christians in that episode. Da 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 da. Exactly. <laughs> it was like the Sharks and the Jets. We should have uh, burst yeah. into dads, but yeah, yeah, go ahead. But, but first of all, your delivery and character in that was nothing short of brilliant. So I wanted to oh, say God. that first. Thank you. That's very sweet. You Thank you. Such a great job. <laughs> so, um, but I had a couple of questions about that episode. Number sure. one, how much time do you end up in the water? Okay. Um, oh boy. Uh, this that was, be no, no, that was not fun. Um, that was actually, there was a certain point where I was kind of, I'm ready to get out of the water now. And I'm, I, I, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm not like, uh, I'm not a diva. I'm not difficult on the set. I, I enjoy what I do. And I know that we're very fortunate to get to play for a living and be well compensated for it. So I always hope that the people around me have a good attitude as well, because it's ridiculous not to. After being in the water for the length of time I was, and there weren't a lot of, there were people around me if something went wrong. We were in the middle of Lake Castaic. It's really deep. It's like being in like a little mini ocean. And um, at a certain point, I was like, I don't think I could keep myself up in the water anymore. You better drag me in the friggin' boat. So by the time I got out and I had that, you know, I just remember that like pastel sort of shirt that I was wearing. It looked like waterlogged. And everything that came out of that scene was perfect. It was the perfect timing right after I got out of the water. So, cause I had really honestly had enough. And again, I don't know how much of this, you know, but that show is improvised. It is not really a scripted show. So there, there'll be a scripted moment, kind of like an improv. They'll say, okay, here's an idea for this scene, go with it. And that's what a lot of the show is like. So we have these great improvisational moments and what happens happens. And it, it varies. If, you know, if you thought, you know, it varied wildly in a movie that was scripted from take to take, Imagine something that's completely improvised take to take. So, you know, we got to, and thankfully I'm working off like these amazing actors that are amazing at improv. So it worked really, really well. But yeah, I was really uh, not happy in that water. And I'll be very happy (laughs) not doing another baptism scene again like that. You know, I know they sometimes dunk you and they, or they'll put, I'm not, you know, I'm a a horrible Jew, let alone Catholic or Christian. So (laughs) I don't know how it works, but um, so I don't know how it works, but I think I'd rather do that. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you. I'd rather do the out of the water baptism if it's going to happen again on screen. It'll be a lot safer for me. Well, clearly you use that um, aggravation in your stressing in your in your performance of being like, no, no, I, I do not want to do this again. And they're like, oh, we could just like dab some water on your head or put you in the tub. He's like, no, nah, I think I'm done with this. <laughs> <laughs> that was really your feeling. You were not. Well, you were acting, but you were really not acting. Hey, nope. it's like that. It's like the scene of my cousin Vinny when Ralph and I are walking down the corridor, going to our cells with our blankets and pillows. That was a real working prison with real criminals behind bars, and they were not saying oh. what you heard in the movie. They were saying other things, and they were not. They were not not nice. So when you see the look of horror on Ralph and my face as we're walking, just like don't look, don't look, just keep walking, keep walking. <laughs> that, it it was the real deal. So yes, yeah, sometimes bringing real life emotion. You know, in its best form, that's really what you should be doing anyway. That emotion should be real. Oh, it was real. It was definitely real. 
That, oh, yeah. That and, and, and that was such a funny, funny episode because at one point Larry's like looking at the other Jewish guys because there's half a Catholic family and half right. a Jewish family. And uh, he's looking at him. He's like, and the Jews are like, oh, you did a good thing. You messed it up. You did a good thing. And he's like, he's like yeah, 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 I did. Yeah. I did a good thing. <laughs> I wasn't thinking of it that way, but it's like, okay. Uh, it, was, it was a great that, that one I've still I've seen a couple of times. It was, very, it was a great show. Yeah, it was, it was really a great funny. show. Now, uh, did you get any uh, direction from Larry David? Um, what was your interaction with Larry? Oh, he, he was he was great. And again, very easy to work with. I think, um, no, no, so we talked a lot on the set and we talked a lot in between takes and there will be guidance. I mean, there's a direct, there's a director as well, but between the director and Larry and also Jeff Garland, who played his manager, you know, who was a friend of mine for years, we did our first TV series in Hollywood together. Um, they'll depending on how the improv goes they'll say okay with this take let's try and take it in this direction without giving you exact words or maybe a key a key line to get in somehow so in between takes he was very generous about wanting me to come off funny and wanting me to make sure i was having fun and that i got to say and do whatever i wanted to do so again really generous to work with and genuinely funny he's i mean again you you, you see him on screen and you know behind Seinfeld. I mean, the guy's a genius. So, you know, I was happy to take the direction and happy to take the tidbits that he was giving me because again, just having a little seed planted for an improvisational scene can completely change that moment and make something magical. So he was great. And I was, and I was happy to soak it all up. Amazing. There you go. Thank you for sharing. Well, sure. I was wondering with all of that, um, doing voiceover, you've done, been doing it for 40 years now, as you said, you've gone through the experience of sitting down in a room with a bunch of people acting out scenes to the point where now I'm probably sure you have a studio in your house or something of the sort where you sit there and, you know, you bust out a few lines and send it in. Right. How has that experience for you yourself personally, like, uh, how, how do you <coughs> deal with that change? Uh, I guess you're talking about like like the concept of self direction versus being in a studio with people yeah. telling you what to do. Oh, yeah, you know that's 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 actually a really great question, and it's something that I'm kind of comfortable with, and I don't think it necessarily depends on your level of expertise or your level of experience in the industry, the number of shows that you've done. I've discovered that some people just don't like it. They don't like to record on their own. Uh, without a director, they'd rather go in for the audition because, again, COVID kind of changed a lot of things for everybody, right? Obviously, on a on a big, more important scale than just this. But, you know, when people – I was – for years, I've been sending auditions in remotely and working from home. Uh, I would I would go in for the actual job most of the time. Sometimes I do it from home. But I, I loved auditioning from home. I loved the autonomy of it. Uh, again, especially living in Los Angeles where it could take you three hours of driving to audition for three minutes – that, that equation didn't seem to make sense to me. So if I could do it, and I felt comfortable. I tried to be honest with myself about what a good take is, what sounds good. And again, for that, you have to sort of not just put your ego on the table, you know, off to the side, but also have a good ear and be good at self-evaluating. Uh, when you're good, when you're not good, what's a good take and when to stop. Because for some people, it's hard to self-direct because you get so obsessed with getting it right because, hey, I'm at home. I have the luxury of time. I could I could do this for an hour and you're sitting there for an hour or two hours trying to get this one audition right. And it, it's endless and it's a, it's a slippery slope. So I enjoy it and I appreciate that. And I think to an extent, I think because I was with, I've been with my agent for so long and I've come into the, their studios and auditioned so many times, they've been with me on the set or in a studio and seen me work so many times. I feel that I earned their trust in terms of self-direction or, you know, I booked jobs on my own for, that I sent in from home where they're like, OK, I feel comfortable that Mitchell feels comfortable in this area. He puts out a good product. So I think part of it is that I earned that, you know, not right, but I earned the ability to do that with my agent, with what I've done in the past. And also I'm comfortable with it. But a lot of people and a lot of super talented, amazing voice people don't feel comfortable doing it. It's just a matter of how comfortable you are doing it and if you're allowed to. So I've been very fortunate in that way. Well, not only with your voice acting, you've done almost 400 episodes of your radio show on Sirius XM. Oh, my God. Oh, is that yeah. that long? Good God. <laughs> uh, so, so uh, you know, in, in the research that I've done, you, you're definitely, you know, a geek. I absolutely love that. Uh, yeah. What's the coolest toy? Your coolest toy. Oh, man. <sighs> what would you say? Like, take anything, but don't take this. My most, 
functional daily toy, believe it or not, is my iPad. And I know it's not new, it's not shiny, it's like it's everyone's used to them now. I still think it's one of the greatest things ever made because it 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 took consumption of media, communication to the next level, even more than our phones did. So for me, it's the iPad. But I have to tell you, um, my my Quest 2 Oculus still blows oh, my mind. Oh, that's, that's cool. dope. And even like, even though we're, we're still waiting, I know they just put a, the Pro out, which we're going to see a lot of that technology coming out in the new year for the new, for the, what are they going to call it? The MetaQuest 3, yeah. I guess, whatever they call the new one, which is going to be the consumer version. I can't wait to see how they apply the tech to that new one. But I'm still blown away by virtual and augmented reality, how it works. And again, I know the technology. I know intellectually how it works. And then I put on that headset and my wife, of course, passes the room and I hear a scare. Oh, boy. You OK? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. And I'm reaching I've around. I'm doing so things. many walls. Oh, my God. I hit my head. I mean, I've had un- I call those unattractive injuries because oh, yeah. they're not fun to explain. And then you have to laugh at what an idiot you feel like for having done it. But um, to me, that headset, especially at that price point, what it's able to do. And it doesn't even have the shiniest, prettiest processors or, you know, the OLED displays for each eye. We're not even up to 4K in that yet, but no. it's so good. Um, that to me is one of my favorites just because to me it's like magic. And when you put put it on someone that's never seen VR oh, yeah. at, at all, and it's 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 mind-blowing. Even just sitting like watching, the, the, you know, the Netflix. Jurassic Park thing that they have on there. That oh, I know. With the, with the, the, t- with the trailer. T- yeah. Oh, it's crazy. You, when you're coming in over the universal sign and it's over the planet and you're just like, oh, my God, well, it's, it's well, you amazing. Know, you should. There's also a demo where you are standing, you're up on the Empire State Building in Manhattan and oh, you have okay. to walk a plank. OK. Oh. And you walk a plank and you see under you the entire city. And it's 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 really yeah. well done. I can't tell you. I've yet to see it. I've yet to have a person do that that is willing to step off, even intellectually <laughs> knowing that, oh, it's yeah, VR you're on the I, ground. You are, they will not step off that friggin' plank. And it's just a testament to how powerful that technology can be. You know, again, oh, that disconnect between your brain knowing and your mind going, nope, not, no, no, not, not doing it. Not me, yeah. not here. Nope, not going to waiting the plank. for this I need Harrison lawnmower, Ford. man. Yeah. And I'm just like, lawnmower, is, man. Oh, I'm telling you. That the great I bring Jeff it up every Fahey. Time yeah, I was like, get it Jeff Fahey on the line. Oh, yeah. yeah. Also on so Fringe, great. by the way. Everyone was. But yep. Sorry, go ahead. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fringe, the, the law and order of sci-fi shows. Everybody exactly. Knows. Seriously. I, I actually have a, a piggyback off of something Drew had said. Um, sure. They do, they do these superlatives in um, in high school, right, with who is the best singer and all that. And um, right. I, I well, can tell yeah. you, the year that it came out, the uh, songs from Vincent LaGuardia Gambini, we campaigned to make that the number one male singer for the year, Southington High School, class of 99. That would have been classic. Yeah. It, and I mean, he sings in Italian. I think he sings in Spanish. And, and uh, I think it's Portuguese. You know, I've never well. even heard it. I've never it's, heard it. It's it's actually really good. It's, and know, I know it's, he's a musician. I know he's a performer musically, too. But I and now now you maybe well, now, of course, I'm going to have to seek that out. So and then then I'll come back on the show if you'll have me back. God help you. Oh, we love and I'll say I listened oh, to that yeah, album. Good. It was amazing. <laughs> You you got yes. that pass back, man. You got that oh, boomerang. Thanks, you you can <laughs> we'll throw it out. You come right back. We're like hey, well, like, you didn't mess this up. I know, right? Great. Oh, God. I I don't you know if uh, he, if he would want to come back because I got a totally fucked up question to ask you. Oh, well, Leo, let's well, thanks, I want to come Leo. back more after hearing it. Go ahead, Leo. We're not even at forty minutes, man. Come oh, on. It's about right, right. <laughs> okay, so right, so fine. there is there is a crazy fan theory out there that uh, my cousin Vinny, uh, that's actually uh, Aunt May. So that links my cousin Vinny with the MCU again. Right. Crazy, crazy, uh, you know, fan theory. If that was true, where would Stan be today in the MCU? Wow, you went there. Working for Daredevil in Hell's Kitchen. Yes! Bravo, sir. Wonderful. You know what? Everybody, Rothenstein that, MCU style, my dude. (laughs) Just get not get there. Yeah. And I, I, by the way, I happen to, uh, I happen to really like the crossover between Daredevil and She-Hulk in the She-Hulk series. I'm not going to just go about you. I enjoyed the show, but I really enjoyed it made me because daredevil 
was great. I got. I also got to hang out with Vincent D'Onofrio. We actually did our first oh, movie no. together. Oh, Vincent what? D'Onofrio and I did our first movie. Again, another crossover with the MCU. Um, okay. We did our first movie together. It was a trauma film. Let's leave it at that. Hey. Um, nice. And we I saw him for the approved. Oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I saw him for the first time in person in 40 years, in 40 years. And Island, we, we right? sat down and I reminded him of the movie and we sat and talked for about 15 minutes about that movie. And um, cause it's so, so going back to like just daredevil in general, sorry, I'm making it about. My no, you're fine. Oh. Um, daredevil was an amazing show. It's a hard watch. That's how I explain it to people. It's not for everyone. Cause it's, it's a hard watch, but I loved it. Being and I liked piece, seeing I that agree. other side of it in she Hulk. That other side of him, which you got to see a little bit, but it was so he was so beaten down throughout that series. It was good to see him not that way in she Hulk for a little bit. Well, but yeah, I think I think Stan would definitely be. Well, be, but, I don't know if he'd be working law or working as his helper at night, but somehow Stan would be there. Well, the, awesome. the thing being with Mitch, the thing being with Matt Murdock is it again. It always comes down to writers because some people just want to do the noir brooding you know, plagued by Catholicism, guilt, dressed like a devil, beating the shit out of criminals and ninjas. Right. And then some people really get the the silver age of him down, kind of like the swashbuckling. He's a lawyer, but he has a decent time. You know, it's right. basically before the 80s came on and Frank Miller was like, I'm going to fuck all of you up. <laughs> Right. I'm talking about Mark Wade right now, then, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. See, Mark yep. Wade was like, okay, I'm going to have some fun with this and have some humor. And they were like, Silver Surfer Surfboard. Why not? Okay. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. And then they're like, nope, we don't like silly Daredevil. We must have super tragic Daredevil. Uh, and I'm just that, like, that was a show, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Marvel. Thank you for doing what you always do. If we make some progress, then no, no, we're going to go back. We lost some people. We want to try to get them back. We're going to lose more, but yeah. we're still going to make the money. So, yeah, I get it. And, you know, that I think that's that's one of the reasons why I was so happy to see the lighter side a little bit, just because that show was so dark. And like I said, I don't want to get away from the fact that I loved it as much as I did. Oh, it was great. But man, it, man, it was dark. So yeah. it was good to see him like not bleeding too much and just, <laughs> you know, just enjoying sort of the lighter side of the MCU a little bit. So. Uh, yeah. but Mitch, I, Mitch, I understand. Anytime I'm walking in a long hallway, I'm just thinking, oh, oh yeah, could, could I could I fight? Uh, for an entire hour and not really give up. And I'm I, like, that was, no. I was exhausted watching that actually. Yeah. That made everybody feel very less fit. I'm like, oh, okay. That was I'm more gonna... effort than the battle of Winterfell. Damn. You just went there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I went there. Yeah. That's a, that's a good, <laughs> that's a good go. Mitchell, in, uh, in, in TMNT. Um, yes. Th was that, did you get to sit down and do a read with those other actors? Cause that cast was insane i just i mean chris evans patrick stewart lawrence fishburne sarah michelle galar kevin smith no billy west jen cummings frank welker no Harris no strong no. i mean it was insane so did you get to sit down with all those people no it was actually the four turtles it was uh me mikey kelly james mm -hmm. james arnold taylor and nolan north so okay. the four of us the four of us were together recording the whole time so they all wanted right. the, they wanted the four turtles together and then uh, the other people worked individually, which was very interesting because I will tell you that for the most part, as a voice actor, especially if you're, whether you're doing a movie or, or an ongoing series act, obviously, having the cast in the room is invaluable. Having everyone there is huge because you're going to find things. You're going to be working off of each other and finding that rhythm. And when you do, certain magical things happen that are not necessarily going to happen if it's just you working by yourself with a microphone in a studio, whether it's a home, in a fancy suit, doesn't matter. You're going to get the best out of that production by having everyone there. So I think we had to settle for at least having the four of us there together and having that dynamic work really well. Mm -hmm. uh, and have it Because again, with a lot of these shows, a lot of movies and TV shows, you don't have the luxury of time to establish relationships with the people that you're working with that you're supposed to have a lifelong relationship with. So anytime that you get together and have that time and you click and it's like, OK, there's a there's a rapport here. Thank God we can do this. So mm -hmm. we were sort of thrown together pretty quickly and then boom, off in the studio we went. So I remember we were we were we were recording. We were recording one of the days that we, you know, because we would have like, I don't know, like six hour days in the studio. And we did a few of those. Uh, I remember the one of the voice directors, we were talking in between takes and we were joking around and someone hit the microphone and said, Hey guys, keep it down in there. And I was thinking to myself, first of all, you have a button that can mute us all. 
We, you can you can turn this down manually yourself, okay? But the other thing was, here were four guys playing brothers in an iconic franchise that didn't really know each other. And it was those in-between take moments of joking around when we were bonding and finding our rhythm and finding our hu humor together. And, you know, I went into the studio and I had, I talked to her about it because it's like, I, I'm not trying to be a jerk or anything. I said, I understand. I said, number one, if we're being too loud, I apologize that you could always turn us down. But that banter that is like loud to you, that's us bonding in there and trying to make a really good, you know, trying to make a group of guys sound really good for you. So if, if you could hit the mute button, if we're bothering you, just turn us off and let, but let us go a little bit in between takes. Cause that's what we're, that's how we're sort of forming these relationships. And she totally understood it was great after that. But so how dare an actor it. speak up, right? But it was important. Aside from the humor of it, where it's like, you're telling us to be quiet when you could just hit the mute button. It's one button and we're dead silent. I don't get it. It didn't make sense. But it didn't make sense more importantly from a creative standpoint where you want that rapport. You want that for, you know, again, if we were being jerks and like being disruptive, that's a different mm -hmm. story. That oh, wouldn't be cool. Right. But in this case, I thought it was helping us, you know. So, Classic Donatello, you solve a problem analytically with technology. With technology, right? That's yeah. why he's the coolest freaking turtle. Boom. Uh, so before our resident shellhead takes uh, takes over this one, that's the gentleman above you. Gotcha. Um, so, I mean, Mitch, you have got to work with so many people. And, uh, you know, Fred Gwynn, um, when we talked about Sergeant Bilko, you talked about getting to work with Phil Hartman. Right. Um, and then Team and T. You, I mean, I don't know if you got to meet him, but you got to work with Mako, who that was his yeah. last role. I know before he passed away. So, what was that like? You know, uh, this is going to be the shortest story in history. Great. Um, we did not work together. Anyway, next oh. question. Uh, no, we, um, <laughs> it, he was so. Uh, they, I mean, it was literally just the four of us. Every other person there, pretty much recorded on their own, or maybe in pairs, but that was it. We didn't oh, get okay. to see. So I, I feel like, like you, I feel like I missed out on that, you know, especially as a fan, number one, but right. also, you know, looking back now, of course, his last performance, um, mm -hmm. which was sad. No, he couldn't promote the movie and there was a lot going on toward the end, which is, of course, sad and horrible. But mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't get a chance to do that. And I really, because you're not the first person to ask. And I'm like, I know, I wish I could have, but they kept us separate. Maybe after I had that outburst of, you let us talk. That's yeah, how we're bonding. You could you imagine if you the whole time? What are you doing? We're trying to make a show here for you. A movie, a movie <laughs> picture movie. So We were going to bring funny. in Sarah Michelle Geller. No. <laughs> yeah, everybody, come on. Now, Mitchell, so do you guys <laughs> get together maybe at, at a premiere possibly or not even that? No. Um, wow. I, I did not know, not, not at the premiere. Cause I, again, I think he was, I think he was not well then. Yeah. I okay. don't think he was at the premiere or else I would have, I don't know if, uh, I'm trying to think cause it was at the Chinese theater. Was it, was it the Groundman's or the man's or they had different names for it over the years. Uh, it might've been a man's at the time. Um, and I saw <laughs> the dog whisperer there. Uh, and he got Milan? to meet Cesar Milan was there, and wow. I got to meet him, and it was super cool. I think I was more excited about meeting him than anything else because I knew what the movie was like. I'd seen the movie, but um, it, it was also really the, the premiere. Aside from not being able to see, you know, some of the other actors, me. it was what he kind of scares me. Like he, he's so like powerful, like. With like his his his, his mind stuff, can suddenly like... make you start sitting up and yeah, barking. all of a sudden I'm going to be sitting it's there. Like the and he's beast, be like sit, right? Jeremy. I'm like exactly. Oh. He has like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> You don't move. It. Uh, so but the, the, aside from like missing out on seeing some of the people I would have loved to have met in person that I didn't get to work with in the studio. My big takeaway from that is that um, my son got to go to the premiere. So, you know, he, Hell you know, yeah. my, my kids were either too young or not born when I was in my heyday in film and TV stuff. So to have them be a part of that, to have at least my son be there with me uh, was really cool. And he was, you know, I think he was probably, Impressed meeting the dog whisperer too. Cesar Milan impressed everyone. Whatever. I was Donatello. <laughs> Damn right you were. Yeah, you it's were. Okay. You're still yeah, I here. was. There you go. Thank gotcha. you. Yeah. Absolutely. I got your back. No problem. Thank you. J J Justin, do you have any questions about anything in particular of a shelled pizza eating persuasion? Perhaps. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it, it's clear from talking to uh, Mitchell for a while that Donatello is the clear choice. Uh, did you audition for any other turtles? No, I don't think so. Um, I think uh, I actually got to know uh, Galen Walker is one of the producers and we were actually in a martial arts class together. And he's like, you're an actor, right? You do a lot of voice work. I'm like, yeah. He goes, you know, I'm doing TMNT. Uh, I'd like to have you audition for us. I was like, great. 
And I think I did one reading and it was for Donnie. And that was that it was, it happened that quickly. I oh, think part awesome. of it was they either, they, I, I knew him personally. I think that didn't hurt in terms of getting in the door. Uh, and then they liked what I did. And then I think it became, you know, maybe more of a fight because it, when it comes to voice work, I, and that they do this a lot and I, I, I understand it and I don't understand it. Um, they want to get as many names in as they possibly can, because I think in the movie world, obviously having celebrities sells tickets, right? Um, in the voice world, you know, we know some of our favorite animated shows. We know who those actors are, not because mm -hmm. they were necessarily celebrities, because we like the performance. We want to find out who did that, who is that amazing voice in that. Yeah. And I think with animation, it's about the script and it's about the animation and the performances of the voice, not necessarily so-and-so is starring as that funny looking dog in this movie. And I think it's the name value is less important than people realize. Although you'll, you know, there are wonderful celebrities that are amazing voice actors. Right. Uh, but I think that the need for the studio, the mindset of we have to have names in these roles because that's the only way it's going to be successful. I don't think that's true. And I think there have been enough animated shows that just did really well because they were brilliantly written and performed and animated. And if they happen to have celebrities, wonderful. But did they need that to the studio? So I think the studios sort of learned that over the years. But again, it's Hollywood. So if you if you can get a celebrity in there and they're amazing at what they, you know, at the voice acting as well, fantastic, like the perfect storm. But um, what was the question? You're doing great. Does anyone remember? You're doing, you're doing great. I, I was asking you if you had auditioned for any other turtle. So. Okay, so I did answer. Okay, good. Yes, that was really, no, no. that was my that was my senior moment. We'll call that my senior moment. Yeah. Well, so, well uh, just just real quick. Speaking of uh, what you're just talking about, uh, celebrities yeah. and and you know trying to fit them in into different roles and everything. Perfect example is the fallout from the uh, new Mario movie. So tell me, bring me up to speed on that because I'm not up to speed. Oh, um, Star Lord is uh, supposed to be Mario. But he's oh, not yeah, doing... this, I did hear about this. Yeah, um... but he's not doing the Italian accent. So everybody's just like, the hell? You know, and um, the people are very divided by it because yeah, some people are like, oh, it, it'll be, still be fine. But some people are like, he's Italian. You know, why yeah. aren't you, you know, hey, Mario, you know? It's a yeah, exactly. And oh. one, of, one of the biggest <laughs> critics um, against it was someone that was actually at Rhode Island with you, Mitch. It was Tara Strong who posted a photo with the original voice actor for Mario and just said it should have been Charles. And I was like, wow, way to just wow. kind of say your piece, but then well, just not. Well, let me ask you this. Was it because he wasn't Italian American or because he didn't fit the part or was it a little bit of both? Well, Chris Pratt right now is dealing with a lot of heat from people because of his religious views. Okay. Um, yeah. And well, that pretty much has brought a lot of, I mean, if, if we go back a couple of years, Chris Pratt was everybody's darling. I mean, he was in right. Jurassic World. He was star. Absolutely. He's you know, great. but, but now. I, um, I, I think it's know. more. I, I think it's more that Charles Martinet has just been solidified as the voice of Mario for so long. Right. You know, and, and, you know, anybody that's a Mario fan, like, you know, we know who we are. We buy the new Nintendos because it's going to have a new Mario and it's going to be Charles voice in them. You know, that's and that's I, the I thing. It's the a recognition voice. factor. And that's that to me is an example of like that voice is. As much a star of the show as anything else in terms of recognition. Right. That's, you know, not to say that the voicing, you know, we're the most, I remember years ago when we were trying to get better contracts for voice actors. And I remember I had people on the ne negotiation committee that were talking to me saying, we're the stars of these, you know, these, these video games. And it was like, no, there's a guy that hasn't had human contact in five years who's been coding in a closet. He's the star. He's we bring star, a little yeah. bit more to it to make it, we make it a little better, but he don't kid yourself. We're not the stars. Three yeah, years. So, I mean, so there's, yeah. a, there's like a healthy dose of reality mixed in with that. However, with some characters, Yes. I mean, there that that who, who wouldn't want to hear that voice? Absolutely. And again, it's you know, it's this skewed idea of Hollywood thinking here is what we need. And uh, I don't necessarily agree with it. I know it happens all the time. But, yeah, wouldn't it be great if all the and listen, my, my buddy, you know, Roger Craig Smith, an incredible actor. He's the voice. He's the voice of Sonic for years before they changed for the movie. Now they went mm -hmm. back to him for the game, the new game. He's mm -hmm. the voice of Captain America. Ezio in um, Assassin's Creed. He's done like, he's amazing. 
Right. And, not the voice, not the name. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, I mean, you know, you'll if you look up Roger Craig Smith and look up what he's done, you'll be like, oh, my God, he's that, that, that. He's amazing. Super talented guy. And he had a really good perspective when they ended up changing and going to, uh, in their minds, a celebrity move for the Sonic movie. And he was okay. totally cool ben about Schwartz. it. Uh, yes. And and he said, like, Ben is a super nice guy. He's good, good actor. He's, he's good in the role. But the fans went crazy because, oh, again... Yeah when you play that game or when you watch the TV series right? and it's not the same voice, even it doesn't matter good or bad. It's like, why aren't you just being consistent? Why the need to feel that you make the move to, Oh, is this going to make the movie do better because you, you put this person in there, you know? Well, so, yeah. And then, and then perfect example of that is when they then did Sonic two and they had Colleen O'Shaughnessy, who again was also at Rhode Island. She was the voice of tales and she right. came back and she did a great job. Everybody loved it. Um, I think also, like you said, it's sometimes it's when characters that you don't see very frequently, like Idris Elba was a voice of Knuckles and right. he kind of had like a Drax thing going and it worked and it was hilarious. Right. Um, you know, I was like, wow, you got three animated characters versus Jim Carrey's Robotnik. Like, boy, this would be a good movie. <laughs> um, but you can act I, against the wall. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I also agree with you because, again, we in the nerd community, we lost a great recently. We lost Kevin Conroy, oh, who yeah. is, as we all know, that's who the Batman we hear. That's, that's when, Batman. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. You know, but it's it's not saying that other people who have also voiced Batman and there have been countless yeah. in animated films and whatnot. Not like they didn't do their job. They didn't do you know whatnot. But like you said, unfortunately, no matter whoever's going to be Batman is going to have to oh. think in their head. How can I measure up to have Kevin years Conroy? Of, yeah, you know. and and to be fair, just to give you a little more insight into like the film world out here, mm -hmm. and again, I don't mean to be condescending. If you already know this, stop me. But it's like whenever there's a new version of something. Okay, for example, we did TMNT the movie, right? Right. That was I was a Donatello for that. We come back, and I think that's where Nickelodeon decided we're going to make TMNT the series, right? right? And they didn't want the four of us to be their four turtles. Now I would like to think it wasn't because we butchered it or we were horrible or they didn't like the way we sounded. And when I heard it's like, Oh, okay. They want to audition you guys to play the turtles. I was like, Oh, now again, I'm not trying to big time everyone. It's like, uh, I don't audition. Do you know who I used to be? It's not like that at all. But if I just played the part in the friggin' movie, yeah, if you want you to already use have me, the audition. If, if you, yeah. if you I, there's a there's an hour and forty two minute audition, <laughs> however long it was. If you don't like that voice, that's totally cool. Hire someone else. I don't begrudge you that. Right. But the second they wanted to make us audition for that, I was like, oh, we're not getting these roles, and now we're they're going to shame us because now we have to go in. So and I went in for the audition. Okay, Mitchell, you're here for Donatello. I'm like, yeah, I yeah. <laughs> and again, I felt like I felt dirty because was, I knew it was just a a, a simp, not a, a courtesy meeting, and right. but. To, to not support them, but just, just as one of these, this is the way it is moments, not necessarily the way it should be, but the way it is. When a new production company or a new team, a new network, a new producer, a new director comes in to an existing project and a new version, a new chapter in that story, the first thing they do is put their own stink on it. They want their people. That's what they do. They're right. going to bring in their writers. They're going to bring in a voice. Maybe they're going to go back to the, you know, the 80s animated version bring back some of those actors which they did who were amazing but that's what people do when they when they, the first thing they want to do is we're going to put our stink on it so you'll know this is not that this is this this is my version of it and i want right. it to be a little bit different and here's how we're going to do that so again i have to sort of take my ego out of the equation which i'm usually pretty good at even though i, I should never have auditioned there. i should have said no no it's cool if you want to not hire me that's cool or just listen to the movie i'm good with that yay um and not go for that embarrassing sort of hi this is mitchell i feel donatello uh, scene mm. one. Um, but intellectually, sometimes that has to supersede the emotion and go, OK, this is why. And you understand it and you don't you know, you, I think the best skill as an actor you can have is to categorically forget yesterday happened. That's probably the best tool in your tool belt, because if you can't do that, if you can't shake off the shit and the garbage that's happened in the past, you'll be mired in that for years. So it's one of those things where, OK, intellectually, I get it now. I know why they do it. It still sucks. But at least you know why, right? And, and I feel like I should be lying on a couch. Like you guys are good therapy. <laughs> yeah, he, he is. Yeah. Go on, guys. This feels really I good. And, <laughs> and, it, and, and it's funny, Mitch, that you bring that up because I remember a story that, that Ernie Hudson said when he, he auditioned to play Winston in the real Ghostbusters cartoon based on, on the movie. And they're all telling him 
how to sound and they're be directing like him, right? They're directing him. Yeah, directing him to Winston Zedmore. And he was like, Do you uh do you you know it's like one of those like you said <laughs> um like you said I, I have an hour and thirty minutes of proof that yeah. I know exactly how Winston Zedmore did and it's even funnier because Maurice LaMarche um when he went in they were like oh don't do a Harold Ramis impression and and you know he he did he kind of did one and they're like okay yeah you're good and he was just like don't listen got it Okay. Oh, oh, please. You know how many times, you know, and this is again, if, if you've been around the block enough times and, you know, if you trust yourself and you trust your instincts, which an actor should to always mm -hmm. be open to direction, but always, you know, you have to, there are those moments where, you know, you can be directed out of a great choice. You can be directed right. out of a great audition yeah. in terms or a great performance in terms of the voice world. So sometimes there are these, some of you like, okay, you know what? Could you just do what I'm, I'd like you to have a little bit more of a Bulgarian sound <laughs> with a little hint of astroturf under your feet. What? And you have to translate, number one, you have to translate what that means. <laughs> and then you can better ignore it and say, I know exactly what you mean. That Do the same work. thing you did. And they say, exactly. Because sometimes people just want to be heard. More right. than anything, sometimes people just want their direction to be heard. And that's mm -hmm. enough. There are people like that. I'm not saying every, I mean, I'm always open to great direction. I've worked with great directors that, again, I, I, in no way do I feel like I have all the answers. And I'm always open. But sometimes you have to be able to know the difference when, okay, I'm about to be directed out of getting this job. So I have to <laughs> say, I know exactly what you mean. Do exactly what you want to do. And they'll say exactly what I wanted. Thank you. Perfect. Great direction. So, awesome. so I have another question, but, but uh, uh, Justin, do you have any more TMNT questions? Because I don't want to stray yeah. away from that. So I, I, you know, I, I want to give you your fill. So um, on, on my show, Epic Tales from the Sewers, I actually do kind of a reenactment of the, the comics and I do it in the voices with, uh, you know, Donatello, Leonardo, oh, all awesome. of that. So do it, do it for fun. And th the goal is you could listen to this with your kids if you wanted to. And right. this is what's happening in there. But my question is, when you're doing your Donatello, what's what's at Donnie's core for you? Like, like what's Donatello about as a character? Like what what drives him? He's pragmatic. He just. He doesn't, again, I think he is a character that sort of takes his ego off the table a little bit and, and looks at things clinically and gets things done the way they need to be done. Now, whether or not mm -hmm. he's the he's the guy or whether he comes off as the hero or not, he just looks at things very intuitively and says, OK, here's a problem. Here's how right. we solve it. And I think that's that's one of the things that I really liked about that character, that he was he was not really ego driven. He was more practical and. Again, when he ended up being the hero in certain situations, I think it was even more fun because he didn't, that wasn't the, that wasn't the point. That wasn't the reason the choice was made. The choice was made to hear, he, look, here's what we have to do. I'm telling you, just trust me, here's what it needs to be. So, and I really appreciated that straightforward approach because I think that's the way I sort of, that's the way I sort of solve things in my own mind. In general, I'd like to think I'm more founded in common sense than anything else. At the end of the day, I think common sense will almost always win out. And I know the joke that it's a very uncommon thing these days. I'd like to see more of it. And it's true. But and I think it was his that approach, that character's approach to things. I, I bonded with instantly. I was like, oh, thank God I was Donnie. Because they'll look at things. Like, OK, well, here's what I do. OK, just do this. Oh, yeah, we could do this. But here's what we have to do. And, and even in that voice, it just it just sort of happened naturally for me. So um, that for me was sort of the crux of the character that I sort of leaned on. And because it was close to me, I feel like it made it easier. It just became, okay. it was more natural for me. So does that answer your question? Of course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a similar, <laughs> similar thing. Um, yeah. I, I had recently met and spoke with Barry Gordon and he had kind of some similar things to say, not, not a big tech guy, but I mean, we didn't realize that he was reading law books and getting his degree while he was doing the turtles and then went on to be the SAG president. And I'm like, okay. Crazy. Total, right. Total Donnie. He's like, oh, I yeah. had no interest in any other one. I'm like, Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, like, it's He's favorite, great. Yeah. I remember him. He did a movie with Jason Robards called A Thousand Clowns when he was a kid. It might have been one of his first movies ever. And I ended up doing the play as my first professional equity oh, wow. play. So I had that again. It's like, you know, six degrees, right? So um, and yeah, you he's worked amazing. with Robbie Wrist, too. So there's another connection. Yes, so. I know. <laughs> and I mean, I've I've worked. Oh, God, I'm trying to think who. Uh, there's so many other. Well, there aren't that many other turtles. That many other Donatellos. But uh, Sam Regal, I know when I've worked with. Um, who else? Oh, there, there are a bunch of them. I'm sure they come to mind. And I'm gonna have to start. I'm gonna. It's gonna bother me. I'm gonna look it up. <laughs> oh, you're one of my friends, Yuri Lowenthal, another yep. amazing actor. Um, who I also saw who was at Rhode Island with us too. Um, but big name in anime, voice, guys. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. So Johnny, I'm, I'm part of a, like a long and proud. And I, I told, I told Yuri, actually, I was like, every once in a while, I look online, I'll go Donatello voices. And there was a ranking, like rank your favorite voice of Donatello. And I looked, I'm not going to lie. I looked, you know, some Did people you beat Corey me, Feldman. Uh, I, I beat Corey Feldman in, yes. in certain, in certain ones. So oh, there no. were, there were a few people that had, there were a bunch of people that had me like between three and five. And then some people had me top three. There are a few that had me at number one, which made me feel very good, which is odd. Uh, seeking validation through the interwebs. Who does that? Yeah. But um, yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So I said to Yuri, I was like, you know, the, the same people that liked my voice liked yours. So we must have a similar sort of, sound or you know he has he has a little bit of that lighter kind of sound that young hero he's a voice of spider-man so of course um but yeah 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 no i i I, i'm very proud to have been a part of that that donnie fraternity so speaking of that i mean you know we're of an age where you know no way home spider-man had you know three different spider-men meeting up if somebody pitched you and we've seen this there was a crossover that had the 80s turtles meeting the more modern versions of themselves if somebody threw you an idea that had your Donnie meeting like the league of Donnie's is that, are you like, I'm son of a bitch. I'm in like, uh, let's dude, do it. dude, where's, is it, where's a scenario that I would ever say no to that? I, <laughs> what, kind, what kind of an escaped lunatic? No, of course I'd be, I'd be all over that. I'd be all drum. over that. And I, I, I mean, it's, that would be, the, that would be so awesome. And you know, I, I, I told it, I don't know if we talked about this when we hung out a little bit in Rhode Island, I know you were really busy. You were going around doing a lot of stuff, but, um, my biggest concern when I found out I was doing that movie after, you know, the excitement set in of knowing, oh, I'm going to be Donatello in a franchise that I love my family, my brothers. I have younger brothers, much younger brothers, actually. My dad never knew when to quit. So <laughs> uh, I'm glad he didn't, though, because I love my, my brothers. So they're great. Um, they're mitzvahs. But I remember, they're mitzvahs, huh? Mitchell. It's a mitzvah. Exactly. As an older father, it's a mitzvah. Mazel. Mazel, exactly. It's all good. Gonna... No worries. Bobola, calm down. It's fine. <laughs> don't, don't, so when I don't. found out I got the part. <laughs> Listen, I was like, you, you're spitzing. Calm down, oh, Woody. God. It's going to be fine. Please, please, good. please. Calm down. Shabbat is this weekend. Calm down. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah okay. again, yeah, like mixing it up for Thanksgiving, right? So <laughs> when I, when I, once I got over the, the excitement, I actually was a little, ooh, I hope I don't screw this up. I bet I don't want to be the Donatello that everyone hates. Because, again, there was sort of like, there wasn't pressure, but there's the weight of this is an existing franchise, a beloved franchise. Yeah. It's had some amazing voice actors, do some amazing stuff that people really love. It's like, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if I'm the best. I just don't want to mess it up. I don't want to be the worst Donnie. I don't want to go online and say, oh, Whitfield's number nine, or however many Donatellos there were. So, right. yeah. So, yeah. There, yeah. If there were, if there was a multiverse of, of turtles, oh, yeah. Sign me up. There you go. Right. Awesome. Uh, I, I know we totally want to be respectful of your time. Uh, we'll wrap things up shortly. Um, just wanted to make sure that we we touched your dork side a little bit. I know that sounds a bit. Annoying. I don't know if you can say that Ooh. in 2022, but go ahead. <laughs> Leo, I, we want him back. Why do you keep doing hey, this? He's already offered. He's locked in. <laughs> it's 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 it does get produced by the Weinstein company. Can't say no, oh, jeez. No. Oh, oh, we I can't. Uh, you did. You did pull the turtle togetherness though with the Weinstein Company. So I mean, there yeah. is that whole thing. So oh, yeah, yeah. Very, well, well done, sir. Well done. <laughs> All right, Leo. Ask. Well, I like to watch well, things burn, sir. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me pull out my hot toys. Oh, oh boy. Well, oh. Yeah. Well, well, actually, Mitchell, gonna, of was... course, we we definitely want you to come back anytime you're promoting anything new, or if you just want to chat some about some nerd stuff. I mean. You were oh, amazing yeah. and super great. I want to see his hot toys. <laughs> really nice meeting yeah. you yeah. at Rhode, Rhode Island. Like me and, and Justin uh, are like, super let's gracious. And let's not forget, you got uh, my most viral TikTok by like almost double, 6,240 6, wow. some odd views in like a week. That's crazy. That's yeah. crazy. And if, I, I if wish you it was look because up your of name me. on TikTok, we're the first video that shows you. So Dylan Dog fans, oh. no doubt. Oh, I, Dylan I, Dog fans, both of them. Yeah, I'm one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Ian uh, Kurt Angle, that's it. You're the two guys that paid to see it in the movie, were you? That was fantastic in the movie theater. That's fantastic. And I had so much fun. Okay, a little a little bit. Of, I'll leave you with this. I'll leave you with this, okay? Go for it. A little bit of geekdom, you know, because we, we all hear it. I think um, uh, Henry Cavill made it famous, right? For, you know, being a gamer and an actor and, and mm -hmm. like sort of trying to balance those two things. So mm -hmm. I remember when I got Dylan Dog, actually – Kevin Monroe, who directed TMNT, was the director of Dylan Dog. 
I don't know if you guys knew that. So you probably did because you did. So he's like, okay, I'm shooting this movie. Here's you're going to be doing this part. I'm like, oh great, I get to play like an undead coroner. That's what a great role. That's awesome. So we're going to fly you out to New Orleans. Great. So I remember it's like I'm in New Orleans. This is great. I have to go to Capi Dumont, get my beignet, do the whole thing. It's like shit. I'm playing Warcraft and I'd have a big 25 man raid. What am I going to do? No, this is this is this is like so sad. I'm like, okay. And everyone else in my guild had their epics, and I was going to get my epic bow, and I was really excited. It's like, okay, so I was like, okay, I'm going to leave my laptop here. I'm going to get a cab down in the hotel. He's going to take me to Cafe Dumont. I'm going to get my beignet. I'm going to eat them in the cab and then go back upstairs. Well, the cab, the poor cab driver, he he says, I said, can you take me there? He said, no problem. I said, can I eat in the cab? Yes, of course you can. So I, my guild is waiting for me. We're about to go in, and we're at the end of the, the friggin' raid. I get in the cab. We go to Cafe Dumont. I get my bag. And I don't know if you've ever had this. It's filled with powdered sugar. When yep. I got out of that taxi, it looked oh, like God. a Coke party had happened in this <laughs> cab. I was covered from head to toe. And I'm like, I'm like trying to like get the sugar. I looked like I was tweaking. I mean, it was terrible. And I'm getting like, out. No over here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. It's a great ride. Great. And I'm like, you know, it's like, like, it was awful. So that was my memory of doing, along with having a great time and, you know, getting to see Kevin Monroe, who I love. He's a great guy. And, you know, working together, Brandon Routh. It was great. It was a good time. But me having to make my Warcraft raid covered in white powder, just shaming myself. And like and people were like, what's wrong with you? Because they didn't know why I left. I was like, just wait, wait, hold the raid. Don't start. So, yeah, I managed to in, in, inject a little bit of geekiness into every piece of work that I do. That's fantastic. That's the dream. That's yeah. the dream. Leo, didn't I'd you like to think I'm living it? Well, no, I... I... <laughs> He was going to uh, ask more about Dylan Dog or maybe well, Dog. No, no. I, like uh, <laughs> you mentioned Hot Toys. What was the last figure that you got? Uh, last figure that I got would probably be Iron Spider from the PS5 video game. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Wow. Uh, because, okay. oh, hold on. Jeez. Yeah, I always going to have to show off. <laughs> what, well, what a nerd. Already, we all do this. It's my favorite part of the show. Yeah, I already had... Enough. I it's already had this show, one. Oh, wait. It's now it's like, wait, come back to me. There we go. Oh, it follows you. Wow. Yeah, I have like a oh, that's crazy cool. webcam. Oh, that's so hot. I already had this. That's cool, his, man. His mask dropped out of his hand. I'm going to obsess over it. And now, hold on. The camera's going to follow me, too. Oh, so the thing about sick. these guys. Wow. Is, that's gorgeous. So, but Look the whole thing is you get obsessed with posing them, too. It's like I have to have the yep. right pose with the right hands, the right expression, and the right head. So this is what I do. And it's like, oh, my, my wife will be like, oh, so-and-so wants to see, you know, your action figures, like your collectibles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, With that same I call it of... my museum. Dude, I mean, I like, I have to come visit you guys. That's what I have to do. Because I see stuff in the background there all over. And I have to get... Uh, the, the, listen, I would say this. Leo, Justin, Jeremy, there, just go visit them. Me, boring. So if you, get, you can see my three foot last Ronin statue. I like that window. Oh my God, look at oh, that. Wow. Whoa, I almost fell off. Whoa. The <laughs> Just, oh, all dude. right, Justin, do the thing. Show off. See, oh, man. Statues. Those are dope. Oh, and the Fraggle Rock fucking vinyl. Oh, yeah. That, that whole thing. <laughs> Fraggle Rock, too. Oh, dude, that is awesome. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you want to you wanna tell my wife? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think you have to take out a second I mortgage. I'm in no uh, – listen, I've already invested just in board games. I've gotten into board games in the last three three years, like really hardcore. Oh, my like God. Like mostly Kickstarter stuff and hard nice. to – I mean, so the garage – and we have a big garage, and it's – Dark we had to, Tower's coming back, yeah. Oh, Dark oh, – dark, it's great. It's such yeah. a great game. Yeah, I kickstarted <laughs> it, that one. That was awesome. It, I played it, that one. And it's so funny because I had this idea for a board game. I wanted to buy a, a, a Jumanji. And I wanted to have a sound cue put in it, the drums, and just walk around a con, just wait for somebody to hear the drums. I'm like, I got to bury this thing. Do you know where I can leave this for 30 fucking years? That's a great idea, actually. That's genius. I just, I just want no, it's, it's the thing is, can I just want to, uh, yeah, exactly. I just want to be not like plain clothes so no one suspect it and just walk. And I hear, want to have you know, increase the sound. I want people to be like, the hell? Dude, that's genius. You hear, do you hear drums? And then especially, You've got to do it. Or you got to leave it somewhere. And you watch someone hear the drums be like, oh, no, 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 no. Magic box, hell no. Oh I've seen God. what this did to Robin Williams. No. Oh, yeah. It wasn't <laughs> pretty. It was not pretty. 
<laughs> now you got me looking at everything. Do I have everything ordered? I'm like, what, what should we be playing then as uh, as geeks and dorks here for uh, for board games? What? Oh, uh, that's a good recommend. Oh, yes, please. Oh, oh yeah, my God. I'm there's so many There's so many great games. games. I'm a big, like, uh, Stonemaier games fan. And Stonemaier has uh, Wingspan, Viticulture. Wingspan, Side. yeah. Side, there's another one. I've become friends with the founder, of the, the founder of the company who designs a lot of the games, Jamie Stegmaier. He's a great dude. Puts out amazing games. Those are great. There's a game called Quacks of Quedlinburg. Which is amazing. Um, it's 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 great. You should look it up. But there's also one, especially for 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 geeks like us that love tech and all things sort of nerd funny. Uh, there's a game called Destinies, and Destinies is basically it's it's a game that's app assisted. So you you could you you have your iPad or iPhone out or your phone of choice out, and basically it's an adventure game with a fog of war where as you as you go progress on the board, you, you know, unveil new areas on the map and every, everyone at the beginning of the game is given their own destiny. Oh. You have a card that tells you what your destiny is. Now we might have crossover among us. It's a three player game, but it's an odd number. And so we're trying to fulfill our destiny, but it behooves you to listen when other people take their turn to what they discover, because we may have some crossover in achieving our ultimate goal. And you, you're scanning cards into the app, and it tells you what happens when you use the card in the app. The storytelling is great. So for, for our group, I think Destiny is going to be great. That's cool. Awesome. That's oh really that, good. that sounds really great. It's like Illuminati back in the day. Reminds me. Oh, of yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's some, again, this is a very slippery slope. It's yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm that bad, guy. Bad. I'm going to push you have over you, the slope. Yeah. I'm sorry. Have you seen his room? He's, he's, there's no slippery slope. He's there. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. I am too. I just hide it well. The camera's just pointed in the one area where you can't see everything. And oh. isn't this cool? This camera does this. That is awesome. That is, what what yeah. camera is that? It's an Insta360. Oh, nice. Um, then they just put out, they have all the action cams that, you know, let you, you know, take one shot and it covers all the angles. This is their webcam version of it. It's like the Insta360 link. But sometimes if I make the wrong gesture, it does makes the camera do some weird stuff. So I have to be careful, like sit there like this. <laughs> Leo, let's get some more sponsors. Three sixties for everybody, okay? Oh, there yeah. we go. Thanks, buddy. All How right, cool. Good time. Around the room. Uh, well, well, we'll let you go, Mitchell. Uh, one last quick question. Uh, yeah. You know, Justin uh, mentioned his uh, his statue there. Have you read Last Ronin? Oh yeah, great. Question. Have I what? Have you read Last Ronin? I have but not. Oh, you should. Good. If you like, if you if you're you're a turtle fan, you will love that. It's only six six issues, guys. Six yeah. five six. Justin oh, five issues. Five five issues. It is. It wow. It's a it's a sad book, but you will love it. Okay. Yeah, J Justin's been talking it up forever. We finally just read it, and it is friggin' amazing. Okay. Uh, and Done. short short read, uh, graphic novel you can grab from Amazon real quick. I mm -hmm. love that. Yeah, I love that. I will get it. I will grab it when we're done. I'm actually awesome. saving up to have Bob do a commission for me. Oh, there oh nice. Ooh, but, well, um, I even like the way it looks. Dark. Uh, there, there's oh, yeah. actually, there's actually a new NECA figure that's uh, just coming out as well for, uh, oh, for Last Ronin. Don't tell Justin that. No, 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 no. Don't tell Justin <laughs> like that. Like I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, odds are it's probably a done deal already. But I'm I got like oh, original oh. production art on the wall, Drew. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Mitch, you have to understand, everybody in this chat has a weakness. We're yeah. all so strong, but when on someone like above me sees a Transformers toy on sale oh, or yeah. the oh, shell guy else. or the clown or, or you know, our deep-toned gentleman on your right, uh, we just find that one thing. Now, yeah, you, you, Thinny. <laughs> uh, we just find that one thing and we're like, oh. it's like, I got time for that. Oh, I have time for that, though. Dude, yeah, my, my dad still sends me the Hess trucks for Christmas every oh, year. So <laughs> awesome. oh, which are sitting right up there on a shelf surrounded by Amiibo and board games. So <laughs> you, you, you got the right guy to talk to. That's all no, I was If you're talking about an yeah. addiction, you know, covered in sugar in the cab, yeah. that's your guy. Listen, yeah. Mitch, I, Mitch I, I saw a commercial recently. I was like, they're still making these? I was yeah. like, what the Back hell? And they're better than ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they, they made right, that's it, Justin, get out. They made a Tonka uh, Transformer this year. Yeah. Oh, really? They wow. Really? Yeah. I was so tempted to get the Optimus, the, the robotic Optimus. Oh, the one that, that actually transforms? Well, oh, they, they, they got the a new version that's yeah. smaller. I was watching the video well, of that thing transform, and I was like, oh, my God. I know. I almost had yeah. to be picked up off the floor. It was so well, beautiful. Well, yeah. at least you didn't, <laughs> Mitch, at least you didn't get the, the Omnicron. Someone was like, oh, yeah, this is beautiful. $800. I'm like, no. 
No, well, that's oh, what, yeah. that's what yeah. robotic yeah. that's what robotic optimus cost seven ninety or seven forty five. Oh, they wanted <laughs> Astro Pulse, yeah. For Eternia. Oh, that looks like, great. No. no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Buzz Lightyear, though, looks good, too. Made by the same company. That robotic yeah. Buzz Lightyear is kind of killer also. Uh, no. It, there's a uh, new uh, new version of those Optimuses that, uh, that's coming out. It's smaller uh, and cheaper. Um, I'm in. The smaller, is what, the smaller is what gets me because I don't have the room for the big bots anymore. Yep. Yeah. All right, there you go. Well, guys, we give him a lot of food for thought. He's definitely going to go oh, spend the oh. money when we're done. So, uh, thank love you for that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, love to have you uh, back, Mitchell. Uh, I, I work in tech myself, so I'd love to dork out with you some more sometime. Uh, I'd but love it. We'll, we'll let you go. Where do you like people interacting with you on social media? Uh, let's see. I'm on the Instagrams. I think it's Mitchell under, or M underscore Whitfield. Mitchell underscore Whitfield. One yes, of those. You are. Oh. Yes. Uh, and that's that's for that. That's my sort of platform of choice. Um, nice. And I, I think it's funny because people like try to search for me and think it's going to be all about acting. And then it ends up being board games and geeky yep. stuff and some acting stuff mixed in. So that, that's what you're in for. But yeah, Insta the Instagrams are the best way to, to follow. Yeah. Me. Very One cool. last question. Yes, I sir. I see the Xbox controller. What are you playing? Uh -huh. I saw the Xbox controller. Probably an playing? Xbox. <laughs> yeah, I, I have many. I, well, I have an obsession with the an controllers, Xbox. too. So, so yeah, I'm a, I'm a total expert. I have the PS5 also, but I have a Series X in here, Series X in the living room. I'm kind of a hard, I've gotten hardcore Call of Duty now, which is hard as an older gentleman because mm -hmm. the reflexes yeah, are not the what they used to be. Yeah. yeah, but if it you was, get the uh, settings just right, if you adjust those Williams settings, game and, of choice too. It's yeah. what? That was Robin Williams' game of choice too. Really? Was it? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, he was I big on it. Know that. Really? Oh, I, oh, wow. I, my, my nephew has taught me, you know, a good game sense in that game, so I'm way into it. But yeah, Xbox controllers everywhere that I customize, you know, on you know Xbox Design yeah. Lab. It's mm, um, sad. Do you play okay. Horizon, um, Horizon uh, Forbidden West on your PS5? I have not. You know, I haven't fin I haven't finished Zero Dawn yet. Oh, wow. Okay. So I can't even wow. make the jump uh, yet. And I don't want to make the jump till I finish the first one. Soon? Yeah, you definitely got to finish the story. So. Rich and I are I like, <laughs> <laughs> we no. need to exchange gamer tags sometime. And the fact that I that have that game as an Xbox guy, it's a testament to how good like some of the PlayStation games. I'm not one of these PlayStation's up. They're, they're both great. I just happen to be an Xbox guy Thank because you. years ago I wanted to play online with my friends. And I'm sorry, but Xbox is always the better place to play online with your friends for years. It's gotten a little closer now. But that's why I was always an Xbox guy, and still am. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. War, they both have their good points. You know? They do, and I play them both. Who am I kidding? Totally. Or I have to go eat dinner. My wife's gonna <laughs> yep. kill me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Go good like luck, guy. Back to the house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have Mitchell. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'll see you guys soon. Yeah, have absolutely. Good Thank you, sir. Take care. Great meeting you. You guys too. All right. All right. That was, well, that was I had like a million more questions, but yeah. well, yeah. that's yeah. why we have him back for part three, Turtles and yeah. Time. That was dope. It's <laughs> a good call. Justin, I saw that face. You're like, well, I, was, oh, I was thinking about it. <laughs> I was like, hmm, how could we make this work? <laughs> Turtles and Time. Gentlemen, you know, guys, with, with all the you're welcome. that you have on, you're going to have to get like some sort of fan cast going on where you have all these people on like interacting at some point. I, I Listen, I was just still stunned. He was like, oh, yeah, I saw you walk around busy. I was like, was my plaid shirt that recognizable? And I was like, <laughs> you, you did wear the same shirt both days. I'm like, yeah, that's fair. We, me and Rich did hustle and bust. I mean, that's he the was thing. Also, I, he was sitting. He was right on the Andrew and... Uh... We were right on the end the next day quite a bit with our good friend, Jim that's, Mr. That, John Glover. That's true. Yeah. Johnny Boy loved it. He's a big Joker fan, guys. Just let me let you know. Big, uh, big Joker fan, that man. Um, but no, it was because, you know, again, I, I still couldn't believe because and it's so funny because I have this weird hang up. I'm going to get over it. But Rich is the best because you know, the man walks in, he's got the green hair, he's got the purple coat. He'll just walk up to this person, he'll give the card, he'll he'll schmooze, and he's like, All right, Drew, set it up. Let's go. I'm like, Yes, sir, got it. I'm out. I'm ready. I was, you know, you know, we're good good team like that. Cause I for some reason I can do an interview with anybody, but I cannot bring myself to approach them and be like, Hey, if it's a comic person, oh, that's no problem. There's no block. But a celebrity, I'm like, uh Rejection syndrome. Uh. 
I saw you uh, uh, interview uh, a giraffe uh, once. That was amazing. You're welcome. Listen, that step ladder was really difficult, but let me tell you, <laughs> whew, uh, that documentary on chewing leaves, wow. Definitely yeah. put me to sleep. Uh, hold, hold on. Uh, for just for all our, our fans out there, Leo, just give me one more second. For all our fans out there, if you haven't seen it, uh, Drew and I were at Rhode Island Comic Con, and he did a fantastic um, three-issue um, interview with Mitchell. So if you want a little additional Mitchell content, check us out on YouTube. It was really great. There it is. Splash pages. Check he, it out. He's, and he's back to you, Leo. Okay. Back to you, Leo. Uh, hold on. Other side, uh, Rich. So, so, yeah, uh, just real quick. Um, Rich, I just sent you a link. Um, yeah. so if you can send that to Mitchell relatively soon, um, with the new stream yard, uh, it, it's, um, everybody has to do their own upload. Oh, okay. So if you can send him that link, ask him, you know, if he doesn't mind clicking on it, he'll finish uploading his file to uh, the server. Oh, great. If, if not, uh, I can make do with what we have. Okay. Um, but the the new stream yard it copies like everybody's camera individually it's really so, cool so do we want to briefly talk about the movie or are we good i you know i mean is there really much more to say it was well uh so let, let's uh we can talk quickly about it uh and i know we also want to cover a little bit of the news and i know we are running a little late you, you uh, folks aren't but... going to talk about black panther right no no okay all right good because i'm like yeah, yeah. i will have no. to dip no, nope. I'm right there with you. <laughs> no, uh, we won't spoil it. Uh, what I recommend is everybody definitely check it out uh, when you can. It, it, it is a better than movie. Black Adam. I think Black Adam was better. That's Do that's you? what I hear yeah. from most people is that Black, Black Adam. Black Adam. Adam you, boring, you, so you you know what, Leo? Be... I've seen where you live. You pick the weirdest hills to die on. I swear. Yeah. Like, like, like the, don't get me wrong. I wanted to like Black Adam a lot because it's DC and stuff, but I was. Like by the third ending, I was like, "Please, <laughs> God damn it, Jeremy!" <laughs> I haven't seen that either. What the hell's the matter? Oh, I won't tell. You, I won't spoil anything, but I just wanted it to end. Well, so, so Black Adam tonight. <laughs> Black Adam's out on VOD tonight, or, or yeah. today actually. Oh, yeah. fine. Nice. Oh, so yeah, oh, yeah. That's what okay, I'm saying. Um, When's Black Panther out? Uh. Not anytime soon. Uh, no, that's like three months, right? Yeah. Uh, it, well, it's normally like forty-five days, but um. Oh, 45 days. Yeah. yeah so, okay. You know, can I just I acknowledge mean, compared something? to what we used to have to wait? That's nothing. Yeah. So can I just acknowledge something? It's almost December. Like twenty twenty two is almost over. God. What the hell? Yeah. Anybody doing Northeast Comic Con? No. That's no. this weekend, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. I believe so. Our, uh, you know, our buddy Bob, Bob, uh, I can never say his last name, but I know he'll be there. Our uh, Bob, our friend Bob. yes, yeah. he will that, be there. right there. That that guy, that guy got Bob, it. He, I'm uh, Bob to check. Sorry, I'm saving up to get a commission done by him. I'm gonna have him do uh, Jar Jar as Shredder. That's, what? That's fantastic. Right? I thought that would be a great idea. That no, I, that I don't hate that. <laughs> I, I'm a big. Fan. I, I I wish I had them available right yeah. now. They're in my collections. Which, dude, I I, I have to sp uh, uh, gush. I don't know the word. Uh, no, I don't know. That's right. I'm sorry. Gush, this gush. is the first time gush. in 30, 40 years that I've had had a place to display stuff again. Mm -hmm. It's since I was a wee lad. Cool. And oh my god, this is so cool. My, my 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 wife's lost me. I, I'm never going to be seen again. But <laughs> like, you get that you're, comfy a, couch, you're a decoupaging yeah. fool in the back. Oh yeah, I'm decoupaging your, um, everything. Masters of the Universe sword looked really cool. Yeah, you like that? Uh oh, the door's open now. But oh, yeah, like I, I got my swords hung on the door. I got uh, I got uh, friggin' Galactus and the Sentinel holding my uh, Twilight Princess sword. Uh, oh. uh, like I got nice. cool stuff. So, like, Jeremy, I, I I don't know if I had seen it, but did you finish building the Millennium Falcon? I did. Hold on, okay. I, I can show you that. Okay, good. That was pretty friggin' huge too. I saw him uh, working on it. Come on, did you see, <laughs> Justin? You weren't there when he won it. No, no. Okay, I, I like that man was. What well, to was say? Making the Kessel Run. To say Jeremy was ecstatic is an understatement. That man 
was just so happy. Like, Holy look at crap. Look at that. That is look just it shines in the in the light. It's just wow. I'm I'm sorry that Jeremy. I'm sorry. That's the kind of thing you do the sound effects for. Oh yeah. You know. Oh like, yeah. When yeah. you're landing, you're like. Yeah. <laughs> I think I know what I'm it's asking. Got to for weigh like Christmas. 30 pounds. I don't wow. even know. Yeah, Justin, you got to pay off at least three parts of that statue before you can ask your wife for anything. Oh no, I I pay cash, my friend. <laughs> oh. oh dear God. Oh, true. Wait, I already know what I'm getting for Christmas. You're gonna be jelly. Listen, you just make sure you put some peanut butter on it so you can make a good sandwich. Okay, that's all I ask. But your jelly. Kind of oh, so yes, we glue it together. Yeah. Um, a wife teased me with the Ecto One Lego. Oh yeah, well, that one doesn't oh. cost as much, but it's it's huge no, no, too. not even close. <laughs> no, I, 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 I couldn't afford that. Listen, <laughs> my, I, listen. When my parents got me the firehouse, that oh, was enough beautiful. for me. Like oh, you know, that is so cool, Drew. Yeah. Uh, li again, listen. I'm not you guys. I'm not Mister Mister Pond over there. <laughs> You know, or or Mr. Cooper above me, <laughs> or Mr. Jar Jar. And speaking of Jar Jar, speaking this of me, of yeah, no, but me and Rich tried very hard to meet Jar Jar at Rhode Island, and we were unfortunately unable to do so. I mean, it's okay. You know, it's the, it was just politics. We really oh, don't want to get into it, it yeah. but but I will say this: from just being near him, he just sounded like the most pleasant happy person and honestly considering everything he'd been through it's just so nice to see so yeah. like it was a, definitely like a contact positivity high you I'm know I'm sure now that he's out doing the con circuit I will get my shot one day I, I honestly my friend I hope you do because well we could use, me and Rich could use a little bit of good news there because well I, I I was armed with your questions Jeremy so I was prepared and I had one additional like... one about his performance in Stomp that he did, um, but uh, I, his I handler just wasn't pleasant and not the most forthcoming and just gave us <laughs> a lot of for, false hope and false hope and then all for nothing but it was, we don't blame that on him we definitely blame that on the handler yeah it was just that it happens was, a lot whatever. Um, but so let's brief. Is there any current news that we want to go over, Leo, before we just briefly talk about TMNT or? Uh, yeah. So uh, the Doom Patrol will be back on December 8th. Yes. I got to catch uh, up on that. The show just doesn't go away. It doesn't. Uh, do the new trailer just dropped. Um, let's see. Uh, what else did I have here? Uh, Is Brandon Frazier still Robot Man? Yes, uh, but what also... Was name? What was that name? I'm sorry, what did you say? Uh, Doom Patrol Season 4? No, Drew. Drew, what is the name of the actor? Brendan Fre... No, don't. That's... Oh. No, I... Fra Fraser? It's Brendan Fraser. Fraser. Brendan Fraser. 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 All right. Thank just you. Sure I'm just trying to be consistent, sir. Just trying to be consistent. Save your continuity for Marvel. <laughs> so, well, not um, the X-Men, but the other books. Yeah. <laughs> what timeline? Um, uh, so, so this was big. Um, so for Ooh. those of you oh, that the Iger, uh, well, Bob Iger's back at Disney. Uh, that's that's kind of big. Uh, but this year may be potentially bigger. Ooh, um, like, is it like bigger than big? I bet it's about Mephisto. Oh. I bet it's about <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's what about Meph Mephisto? It's Mephisto, sir. It's Mephisto. <laughs> is, it, is it about? Is it about? Sorry, is, is it about oh, Deadpool? Just... <laughs> well, so so this began with a little downfall of Twitter, as you know, Twitter's been been having issues. Uh, so um, a lot of comic people have been moving to Hive Social. Yes, including a certain James Gunn. Oh, I heard about this. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. what is Hive? So, Hive Social. It's uh, it's a Twitter like uh, social. It's kind of like uh, Instagram. It seems. Yeah. 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 Okay. It, it, it's... Okay. So it's like pictures and. Wasn't dialogue. James Gunn like promoting a different one from when we did last week's episode? That was a different platform. 
be uh he should be doing Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas and Guardians of the Galaxy three before he moves on to anything else, I think. Well no no, I mean there was another because like now he's talking about Hive, but there was one like a week ago that he was promoting. Oh Mastodon? Oh. Mastodon. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so they, they say it's better. Well yeah, Mastodon uh, well the problem with Mastodon right now is uh it's it's a much smaller company. Hive mm-hmm. is larger. Yeah. Um, and so Mastodon, they, they don't really have the developers to really expand. Um, so like it, you can't even sign up for a hive social or uh, not hive social Mastodon social right now. Yeah. Um, uh, it's like lockdown, but you can sign up to other servers. The cool thing about Mastodon is anybody can make their own server. It's kind of like BBS's back in the day. Uh, like anybody can make their own community. Leo, I'm sorry. Every time you kept saying Mastodon, I just I kept hearing the Power Rangers in my in the background. Yeah. <laughs> That's where my Mastodon. brain. Mastodon. Yeah. And, so, uh, and well, hold, hold on one second. Uh, just so what happened on Hive Social? James Gunn uh, set up his account, and his uh, his banner is uh, Kingdom Come. Yep. Yeah. That coincides with McFarland releasing uh, Kingdom Come Batman. You know, I would yeah. say anybody who uh, is into comic book speculation and stuff should really look at Volume 3, I think it is, of Justice League um, that came out in the 90s. The I Grant Morrison, New World Order? Yeah. Uh, I think he's going to be pulling a lot from there. That's big. That'd be great. That's a the great run. Yeah, I mean, there's no no arguments here. Bring in some Zario and Aztec, and you know, it's like, yeah, that that's yeah. a that's a win. Prometheus. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, th- can there's I talk, Leo? Uh, one last thing, just real quick. Uh, <laughs> so there's a lot. He's like, oh, no, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> of- I killed Kenny. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of people speculating what uh, DC is going to be doing, uh, but James Gunn uh, also announced. He said the only people that know what's going on is him, uh, James Gunn and Peter Safran. Uh, so apparently, they've just been talking. So there, who we have to kidnap and hardcore yeah. because he talked pillow talk that James Gunn. We <laughs> Probably Nathan <laughs> Fillion. I mean, yeah. uh, go for it, Drew. So as I was saying before I went full Kenny, you know, ah! that's totally right, Kenny. Um, we got hit with another tragedy uh, most recently this weekend, um, which was very unexpected. Um, Jason, um, <clears throat> Jason David Frank, a.k.a. JDF, a.k.a. Tommy Oliver, the original green slash white ranger, passed away this weekend. He was 49. Um, very, very sudden, very sad, um, you know, and by God, I mean, I will say this in 2022, we in the nerd community have just been pummeled with such deaths. I mean, comics, celebrities, I mean, every, no, no year has ever been spared as much as we'd like one year to be like, no, no death. We're, we're good. Let's have growth life. Um, it was very sudden. Uh, they're still releasing details of what happened. Um, I know the Power Rangers community is absolutely devastated. I mean, the man's tenure in the Power Rangers is amazing. I think he literally was, geez, I feel like he was every color at this point. Um, uh, very sad. I mean, I got to meet him once uh, to get an autograph for a friend of mine who's a big Power Rangers fan and a uh, really nice guy. I mean, I always loved seeing him at cons. His line was the longest, Yep. but he really met every fan he could, you know, um, yeah, I was just like, man, we're taking such a beating. Kevin Conroy one week, JDF the next. I was like, I was like, my God, 2022, just end already. Yeah, Drew. So. Drew, don't forget, uh, we saw his sign, but I don't think we saw him at all. Also at Rhode Island, mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, an acquaintance of mine, uh, Christine Henry, who works with a lot of those actors, she ended up being. Uh, there and she said she had a conversation with him and he was having a sad conversation i don't know if he lost his daughter or he lost his he's having problems with the relationship with his daughter and then this happens so obviously there was a lot of stuff that was weighing on him so um 
blessings to his family and uh, best wishes. And uh, I'm sorry for the nerds that are out there. He's 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 not quite in my wheelhouse. I'm a little bit yeah. too old for him, but uh, I can certainly appreciate someone understand. Uh, well, well, Rich, do not worry. I will say the best ending for that is may the power protect him as he moves yeah. on to the next stage. There you so, go. Yep. Yeah. So Justin nodded. So he was like, that was good. Good one. I was I was thinking of Captain Power when you said that because I I don't Captain know much Power. about Power Rangers. I I stopped watching the show when they had show and tell in high school, and I'm like I I can't do this. Oh, so oh, first oh. season, I watched <laughs> I, as a guilty pleasure with some of my friends when yeah. we were high back in. I, high that school. would probably be great. <laughs> it, it was. It was like watching Godzilla almost. It, I, it was weird. I remember when this is my only story with that. I remember I was I was looking through my because. My parents started going through the attic finally. Where I finally reached that point in my life when they finally did it. So I was like, oh, crap, I'm old. Um, and we started going through the toys. And I remember, I was like, oh, shit, I had the original Power Rangers toys. And these are the most basic toys in the world. Yep. But I'm just looking at it. I was like, man, there was so much Zero toy. articulation. Yeah, it was just, it's Justin, it was a straight bendy arm. Like, oh, wow. it was, there was no, thing. it was just... We call those sandbox toys because you, you probably leave them in oh, the yeah. sandbox when you left, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I just saw that and I was just like, man, those toys were the best. But, you know, <laughs> Great uh, memories. But, like, that and I remember. I know his little sword thing there is like worth crazy money. Saba. Yeah. Yeah. I just remember also trying to trick my grandparents into buying the dragon sword because my parents said no so i was like i'm gonna be sneaky and i'm trying to <laughs> and my parents was like we know what you did try doing the answer is no i'm like damn it man my, my big score one year was uh snake mountain and i think that's oh, yeah. i i've never like that was my peak <laughs> it's just never been since <laughs> there's the peak of your nerd the, con man she, that's G. it I joe space shuttle I yeah got that thing in I never got the aircraft carrier, though. My, my my nephew had the aircraft carrier. That thing's ridiculous. I'd be going over there every weekend to be like, hey, uh, We're you, playing you know your shipwreck? Uh, don't yeah. play with him. He's mine. <laughs> uh, that that was the same nephew that uh, when I got into Transformers, I gave him my entire Star Wars collection. Being a good uncle. Oh, That's wow. Really, I, I, uncle. Uh, oh, yeah. I, like, I had, That's great, man. I had everything. I and, love it. Uh, yeah, I, I gave him my collection. I said, you know, you can borrow it, you can play with it. I just wait, need whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, Leo, stop. You Toy Story 3'd your Transformers? Like, I, I, no, I Star was, Wars. Star oh, Wars. You're, you're Star, Star Wars? Wars? It, it was yeah. when I got into the Transformers. I was through m with my Star That's Wars. That's funny. Toys. It's okay. These are for kids. I'm guessing I that was the kid toys one? now. Did you have to explain <laughs> the characters to him? Like, this is Luke Skywalker. He he fights and for the Yoda. galaxy far far away. He, 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 he knew Star Wars, you know. It, I thought I was being a good uncle, and uh, I, I said, you know, you can play with them. I just want them back when you're done with them. Really? Um, Famous last words. Wow. Yeah. Uh, par apparently, my brother threw them all out. Oh. Yeah. This is That's my rubbish. favorite one. That's Log Ray. I'm not gonna say. Yeah, it, but... he's my favorite. Wow. Really, Log Ray? Yes. <laughs> Wow! Did you reiterate to your brother that uh, you you wished for these to return to you? Uh, no, uh, no. I, I was I was a kid at the time. I mean, like, oh, it was, you know. oh okay, that's fine. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. I'm yeah. like, how old kid are we talking? Uh, well, it was when Transformers came out. It had to be probably oh, eighty four. So eighty four, yeah. Yeah. Was, uh, well, all right. Yeah, probably, yeah, like around 84 to like 87, around that time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, I thought yeah. we were talking more like the 90s and you were no, I mean, no, 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 no. Yeah. No, I'm was... now an adult now and I have Transformers and I can't <laughs> play with these No, because no, he, said, he said big kid and I thought of that stupid commercial. I'm a big kid now. <laughs> you know. Uh, you, Mommy, you know, wow. Come, do, coming do, from do, a... Do. Coming from a big family, like my my oldest brother, there was a huge age difference. So, like, you know, he, like my my nephew was. We were close in age, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it, it was. 
pretty... I bet you your brother's kicking himself now if he knew then so, or knew now. No, so, no, no. My, 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 my brother's very well off, so he doesn't. So, Leo, no. is there any other news? That uh, Yeah, a couple things. Uh, Vincent D'Onofrio says, uh, at least uh, in this title here, uh, facing Spider-Man is a dream end goal for his character. Do it. For King that King. would be so dope. Yeah. They should get Mitch in that with him. <laughs> I heard they signed what's his name for like a five year deal, right? The Spider Kid. Oh, Tom Holland? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. What well, else? We, we had dropped that uh, Spider News with Rick Leonardi. Uh, he gave us the exclusive right there about uh, Spider Man 2099, yeah. Miguel O'Hara. I just love, like, oh, you know. Bringing it? Yeah. yeah. And I just love that a celebrity. Like not even celebrity, just you, you're at that point in your life when you can just pull out an email from Sony and just read it to to uh, 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 on an interview. And I was just like, look at this big dick comic book energy. Like, <laughs> like he just he just he was just like, yeah, one second, let me just and he just starts reading it off. And I'm like, excuse me while I whip this out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, speaking of that, Kevin Bacon says uh, he will perform <laughs> perform a uh, musical number in Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. Yeah, so I'm kind of confused with Kevin Bacon. Isn't Kevin Bacon already a character in the MCU? No, he's no. in the Fox. He's in the Fox X Men universe. Uh, oh, was that the Fox's X Men? Yeah, it was the okay. Fox one. Yeah, yeah, because right. you're thinking of was Sebastian Shaw. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All well, right. So, so we so could that, see him in the Deadpool movie. Yeah, so so that's uh that's another rumor going around that uh the Fox X Men will be entering the MCU in order to be offed and then bring on a new X Men group. Perfect. Yeah. Don't, in Deadpool, don't, don't bring uh, him in to kill him. There's no reason. Into yeah, Deadpool, you know? uh, right now I I've only heard the MCU and it's totally like I don't want to watch so. Sean, uh what's his name. Patrick there get offed. You don't want to see his head pop like uh no. Reed Richards? No. I mean they've killed him in three movies now. I know. Yeah, we watched like, three different Xavier's die. Man. That was yeah, yeah like, and we've if, seen it. If, if you and talk if, about Picard, we've seen him die how many times did they blow well, up? The old, listen, fine killing him. Leo that's that's the killing killing off the old guy. The old man Logan one was the worst, okay? What? We just want we, we just watched him die in TMNT again. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. No, I'm, no, come on, Justin. He was an old man was in the funny bed. That he was playing that character in TMNT. I have to say, like, oh. I'm sitting there and I'm Winters. like, he, he's so old. I'm like, that. Why is this? He's dead. Why? No. <laughs> uh, speaking of old, they are saying that Indiana Jones Five is utilizing <laughs> all new de aging oh, software. Oh my God! They're saying. Yeah, I heard. They're saying he's going to look like he looked in uh, the previous movies. This is uh, how you know it's going to be good, guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I, I'm a big Indiana Jones guy, but you know it's going to be good, man. Taking place in the 60s. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm going to go back and watch those uh, River Phoenix ones. You know, the those Young Adventures. Young Indy? Yeah. The, the, uh, like those. They're yeah. On- oh, no. Uh, no, Sean William Flannery or who? Flattery, yeah. Yeah. Flattery, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Those were great. And on top of it, it kind of served as an epilogue for the indie movie because in that you see him at the end. He's got like yeah. one eye. He's given yeah. museum tours and stuff. I was like, this, this makes sense. This is, is a that, lot. Is, is that young indie you guys are talking about? Young yeah. Indiana yeah. Jones. Yep. Mm-hmm. The young wow. indie chronicles. Uh, that is uh, playing on Pluther. Uh-huh. Thank you. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, well. Happy yeah. Thanksgiving for Justin, everybody. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, you know, with Back to the Future, Doc Brown showed up in the uh, cartoons. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. For a but, hot but, with the kids. The kid Speaking that was going to show. No, the, the, the actor, um, Christopher Lloyd. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah, he did a little intro thing in the first episode. Leo, cute. speaking of the Pluther, um, do you watch all those Christmas movies? I no. Do. I do. You put an I try. insane amount of Christmas movies on there. I don't. I, I don't. Do I like Christmas movies. They're to um, watch yeah, with your. Significant I like ones others. like that are coming out. That Silent Night, Deadly Night. Those are my oh, favorite. Yeah, I yes. love Violent Night. Night is going to be amazing. Mark my words. Yeah. You guys have have lost the uh, 
yeah the wonder of the california raisins you know oh my god aren't they great the reindeer uh, i freaking eat I, that stuff I'm for more breakfast. like when they're waffling <laughs> yeah waffling yes <laughs> yeah hey, excuse I, me uh justin i will take your california raisins and raise you a garfield christmas oh and dude when they see so, the christmas tree you. and that is i have the three the thing. three pack on the dvd we just watched it uh for uh halloween so yeah there you go 100%. Justin, we, we we have at our house we have a, um at this point every year we start watching American Horror Story the Santa episode. Oh wow, okay. Yeah. Oh my god. With uh Ian McShane, right? Yeah, 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 with Odin. Yeah. Mr. Oh. Deadwood himself. <laughs> See, I've been um, a big kid at Christmas time. I watch all of those. National Lampoons is on oh, my yeah. TV once a week. My my favorite is actually Scrooge. Uh, and, uh, oh, oh Preston, fantastic. I'll have the California health plate. You know, it's like, <laughs> That's the, I love the, that the, John the, Glover, man. Oh yeah, yeah. There, uh, there you go. Jabo says a Christmas story. Christmas is good on HBO. I like yeah, it. I, I, I like it. Oh, oh, I didn't know it was out already. Yeah. I've heard good things. I was really skeptical, but then has anybody watched the second one? Yeah, I heard that I, was horrible. Yeah, oh. I mean it's not good. No. <laughs> we knew. Listen, that was just uh, how we're doing this. I was for the a picture. little worried Daniel about this Stern. one because of that one. No, Although it's it's, it's a unrelated. totally different. Uh, uh, it's a story. different Christmas story verse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, l- listen, the fact that the original Ralphie and most of the crew came back, I was like, okay, this is a solid leaning towards yes for me. Yeah, it, he you looks know. fantastic. Yeah. Oh, that was. Oh, that's what she said. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Leo, is there any other news before we talk about the movie? Uh, well, uh, just real quick. Um, what else did I? Oh, yeah. Uh, no, I said that already. Um, let me just check real quick. Double check and hold on, hold on, hold on. There okay, is a cool. Turtles uh, Christmas special if you're brave is enough there? to find it on YouTube. It I'm is a live YouTube. action one? It is. It, it's like oh, the fantastic. coming out of your shells one. So, I will definitely watch it then. Yeah. Listen, you can, listen. Justin, there's a real Ghostbusters Christmas episode too, and it's written by JMS, so I get it. Yeah, yeah. You know I that one. That one. I watched the He wrote Shiro the really one good every ones. Year. He did. That was still one of my oh, favorites. Actually, Lucasville. Leo, can you get that on Pluther? The uh, Masters of the Universe Christmas. Listen, Ju- Justin. There's uh, even a Thanksgiving Ghostbuster episode, which is one of my favorites, which I watch every Thanksgiving. Do you, do you remember like a year ago when I said we should do a Ghostbusters the Animated Show series <laughs> podcast? Like oh, I had a name for it, so it's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, listen, I, I just want to point out, I would be so offended if you didn't ask me. And, and, I know! And, and, and Rich can back you up on that, because when we interviewed Maurice, and Leo can also back it up because he's seen the interview... Like, I get so goddamn emotional. I'm literally like, I should have brought tissues. Why didn't I bring tissues to this interview? <sighs> ah, be strong. Be strong. <laughs> oh, Iron and when he will. The, and when Iron he did will. the voice, oh, my God. I thought you were going to fall to your knees. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I asked I him. You might have gotten a little weak. <laughs> you, you were looking a little weak there for a second. True. Yeah, the sum, the, to quote Deadpool, the sun coming down real low that day. Yeah. But, <laughs> Oh boy, meeting your heroes, kids, and they do the voices. I was like, ah, 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 the tears. Um, no, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Leo. When you put up that interview, I'm going to share the motherfucking shit out of that. Yeah, gonna, look at what, this. What, what's your favorite toy you got? Uh, what, would, what would be the one toy that they can't take out of your, your cold, dead hand? Oh, I, oh that's easy. Uh, my giant Hellboy. Oh, so, nice. Whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 wait, wait. wait. All right, wait. I'm going to show you guys this. The Hellboy yeah. over the turtles? All right, I'm already looking. Yeah, can you see him? Where is there it? he is. Right, right there, there, in the corner. The Hellboy. That would oh, be the one. Wow, Hold on. Hold on. That Just is ridiculous. That's yep. my Hellboy show. Oh, you can beautiful. See nice. Beautiful. Yeah. I actually need to get some bookends because I, I, all my book. My like hardcovers and stuff. I don't know where to put them. That that Hellboy was obtained at a uh, Connecticut Goodwill, and it was uh, my my now wife, who, who was my it. girlfriend, uh, orchestrated the whole thing with some friends and all that. And I, I live in Illinois, so I'm from Connecticut. But we had like all these people that kind of worked together to get that thing. 
So the the sheer amount that they went through to get me this thing, that would be the one that I'm running in, you know. Can I offer, Justin, I just want to say, whenever we end up doing a crossover with like you and Brandon, that shit's just so goddamn funny. (laughs) because <laughs> it's just literally like imagining it's like how i imagine if we all sat at dinner i was like it's all everybody trying to get the last word and trying to leave before someone sends the check like <laughs> that that is just the dorkening and the worst part is leah would always reach first and we would just be like get the f- out of here with that mr, <laughs> mr. <laughs> i i like i like that about joining splash pages because i i I had told Rich this a while ago, but I love hearing like his perspective on, on the comics and all that. Cause he's always talking about the villain and, and how he likes that. And I'm like, that's so interesting to me because I, I see the world a different way than, than, you know, other people. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm like, I'm thinking about this, like a Ninja Turtle or, or like a Batman fan. And he's thinking about it like the Joker. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, Oh dude, that's so cool. You know, it's good. It's good times. Absolutely. Yeah. But, and, and, um, yeah, and I, uh, I, put, I, I, uh, I suggested some really good ones for the, our last five days of 2022. So, boy, we're going to have some fun. Oh, boy. Totally. That's all I'm going to say. So, is there really anything to say about... We're up, like, almost two hours. Is there really yeah. anything to say about the movie? We talked about it with Mitch. I think we all can agree we enjoyed it. It's not horrible. Like, I, well, that's the, where the, I would the, put it. It's not horrible. Yeah, I, I'm, I I can't watch the Michael Bay one. I I can't do it. No, I like I the, the one second actually. one from Michael Bay is yeah. awesome. It's well, a cool well, movie. In, in this one, the, the cast was great. I understand. The story was kind of medium. Yeah. The 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 the. the, I the, love the cast. When, when the story is focused on the turtles, it's the strongest. Yeah. You know. Um, sometimes I feel like, uh, when it's, it was focused on the villains, I was like, it's a little boring. I'm going to, cause I, I, I think like Chris Evans interpretation of Casey Jones. And I never knew that Chris Evans did voiceover at all. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty interesting. No. Well, see what we need to do is we need to review Scott Pilgrim and then we need to watch the yeah. movie. <laughs> Listen <Well>. here, bucko. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing Sarah Michelle Geller doing April made me respect her more as Tila in Revelations, mm. I have to say. Because it was hard to swallow her, but like she I, she grew on me by the end. I I just think what it's funny when, when I'm watching animated movies, I always do can I recognize the voice actor? Um, and my favorite was realizing the dude in the diner is Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith. Yeah, like, yeah, right. <laughs> and I'm just like, what are you doing here? It was the same oh. way I felt when I saw him in Daredevil. I'm like, okay, I know why you're here, but what? Uh, speaking of Kevin Smith, uh, mm-hmm. keep that thought. Hold on one second. Hold on. And uh, while I step away for a second, Justin, why don't you tell us how this movie interacts with the original turtles movies right because this is a like a direct sequel right well that's that's the thing um i i had been on a part of like a an interview where they asked uh that very question so tur- tmnt is not exactly meant to be a sequel to turtles 2 or turtles 3 or anything along those lines it's it's kind of like it's the same characters and they don't go into the origin so it's kind of like got, got that going but um, it's it's like a spiritual successor, but it would be like like we would think of uh, the Amazing Spider-Man as opposed to like the Sam Raimi. Like it's you know the same character, but not the same you know universe. Right. Oh, okay. So there would be a there would be a multiverse of turtles out there similar. Okay. This would be uh, like so a whole different thing. For for some reason, I thought it was like a continuation of like the '90s movies. You, you could look wrong. at it that way, no. and, and yeah. you could digest it that way too. Like. He's he's just saying like Kevin Eastman just said it's like it's something that's different and it's out there and it's its own thing and if you want to think of it that way you absolutely can but they never had any plans to you know market it that way. Gotcha. Uh, this just came in. Oh, cool! Oh, you got that's a Kevin Smith one. I got a Kevin uh, Smith toy. Too. Nice. Yeah. That's that's really cool. It was on uh, on sale on Amazon, but it's oh. uh, an Amazon exclusive, so I got the little sticker on it. 
Nice. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, that's a classic. Nice. I, I always, you oh. know, the thing is, it's it's Christmas is coming up. I feel like if I ever have to buy a nerd shit, I'm just going to post to you guys, like, hey, is this a good deal? And I just oh, yeah. feel like, depending on what it is, oh, you know, one of you is going to be like, don't do it. Don't yeah, do it. Overpriced. I or, love going through eBay. If you ever need help, like, finding something for somebody or for yourself, I will sit there uh, and hunt toys let, for you. I think listen, I just bought I like a box of turtles on eBay for twenty I, I, bucks. <laughs> listen, I, I just, literal box. Yeah. Justin, I just want to point out it was it's so funny because Jeremy was going through his stacks and he sends me like photos of like he has some Ghostbusters comics. Yeah. I'm like, well, you want them? And I'm just like, and I'm just thinking like, and I, I just stopped for a second. I was like, do I have these? And I was like, one second. And I was just like. Shh, shh, shh. Yep, I'm good. Thank you. It wasn't until I took the picture of them that I realized that they all connected, too. <laughs> I yeah. was like, oh, hey, look at that. Listen, I think listen. I need to get the single issues of the first Turtles and uh, Ghostbusters crossover. You do. Yeah. They're gorgeous. I just uh, realized I actually had the number one of you, TMNT like, Batman. That like, was cool. Justin, you don't understand. I'm waiting for that message from you that'll say, <laughs> we're, we're, we're doing it. I'll be like, Fucking yes! <laughs> it's the same way I feel. You know, if we're doing it, we're doing voices, right? Oh, what? One hundred percent. Yeah. One, so. and, and I'm sorry. I'm very clearly a ray. So, so just just letting you know that I am just gonna ray the shit out of that one. Because some people are like, oh, you're a Vankman. I'm like, no, I'm such a ray. Just the if enthusiasm you need a alone. Slimer. Um. Yeah, oh no. See, but Jeremy, if you got to do the slimer, you got to Frank Welker it. You just you know you started just like. I, you know, um, no, but uh, no, I, honestly, I love the crossovers and I, I wish, God, I really can't wait till we do the Transformers one. The Transformers Ghostbuster crossover was fucking dope. Um, and it's funny because I keep trying to cover these on Screen Rant. Um, like I'm trying to pitch the one where they did Mars Attacks. Mm. You know, the image crossover. Uh, yeah. That was supposed to be where the turtles got brought into the image universe, but I know. it fell apart. I know it was so sad, but um, but um, again, I like this movie. Um, it was entertaining. It was funny. It's not the worst one I've seen. There are ones out there. Honestly, listen, turtles, turtles. I mean, again, I feel like personally, multiverse theory has just made anything nerdy is just basically covered because there's literally a turtle, a Ghostbuster, um, a Star War, singular, one war, um, <laughs> a Transformer, or even a Joker for everybody. So if it's not your bag, it's going to be somebody else's. Unless yeah, it's Jared right. Leto's Joker, I don't get that at all. That's, that's a really Joker. good Nobody way to look that. at it, Drew. Well, I mean, but that's just, I mean, the same thing with Batman. There's literally a Batman for everybody. Oh, yeah. You know? You know, that's uh, just the best part about long lived characters, you know. Uh, speaking of Batman, I showed this for a sec quick second. I tried to get this from my LCS. They just re released. Oh, that, look, yeah, that's, a nice, that's a nice reprint. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, but it's yeah, our first episode of the dark, uh, the dark night. We covered I that, know. right? Yeah. Do you ever do you ever just do you guys ever just go online and you just look up comics and just see how much how much they're being sold for and just think, yeah, if I could. <laughs> or, yep. or I call it nope to not in this lifetime. If you uh, ever looked at my eBay watching, you'd be like, wow, yep. you've got problems. <laughs> no, that's fine, Jeremy. I'm mostly I going after variants of Last Ronin now. Yeah, I sit yeah. there and follow trends. I, I like. To, I don't even buy them. I, I sit there and just watch where things land, and like I mm -hmm. like watching the numbers. Jeremy, if the if the if the nerdy market was the stock market, you would be Charlie Sheen in Wall Street. I'm telling you, I love okay. it. It's fantastic yeah. watching the right. and downs. So, right basically... now, it's a, a buyer's market, by the way. And by yeah. the uh, spring of next year, I'm going to be buying so many new toys. Oh, it's going to be <laughs> glorious. Good to know. All yeah. right, so Rich looks like he's about to pass out any second. So I think he's definitely wrap <laughs> was... yeah. 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 this up. We're we're, um, we're wrap this up. I'm late uh, for a baptism. 
<laughs> okay, oh, so, no. so hopefully, hopefully this it. works. I'm having issues with StreamYard. Uh, I think after we hit the two-hour mark, That's it starts to get buggy. Beautiful, muggy. Leo. So uh, I don't know if it's on me or not, uh, but uh, hopefully it is. I want to thank everybody for watching this fine evening. My name is Leo. I'm the monkey behind the keyboard here. And, uh, you know, I run a little thing called the Dorkening Podcast Network. Uh, just head on over to thedorkening.com. You can see all the latest episodes there. I'm going to try to see if I can move to everybody. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, rate the movie in uh, Bowls the Turtle Soup. Uh, so I'm going to get son of a bitch. 3.75 Bowls the Turtle Soup. Uh, and uh, Jar Jar. Hey. You can check me out over at uh, Comic Books Lovers Buy, Sell, Trade, and Auction on Facebook. Join the other 20,000 fools that are buying, selling, trading, and auctioning off comics and toys and all sorts of other stuff. And you don't have to pay those eBay fees. Um, and I would say for bowls of soup, uh, turtle soup, I would give it probably, I'd be in the 3.5 to 4 range. So 3.75 great voice cast and story was a little eh but uh, overall i enjoyed it okay justin see i like the story guys it, it was a little different than normally just fighting the shredder and krang and all that so I, i'm gonna go with four and a half out of five check right. out my turtle show uh you know we, we just hit five thousand downloads we we're actually moving way past that you know yeah, and um nice. epic tales from the sewers and you can find us anywhere that you find uh wonderful dorkening podcasts Woo woo. Uh, do, where's the button? Drew. <laughs> first things first, I think Leo is, is, is such a monster for making it bowls of turtle soup. So, and other defiance <laughs> of that, because he's a schmuck. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with I thought this was an entertaining turtles. Um, while I wasn't the biggest on the villains, I did love all the voice actors. Uh, everybody brought a little something to the table. I thought it was still pretty entertaining overall. So I'm going to go with four turtle shells. Whoa! Shells. Um, not soup. And, um, yeah, I'm good. You can find me in places. I've said it enough. I'm not saying it again because I know one of these idiots is going to say it for me. So I'm somewhere. Yeah. I'm doing something. I'll get back to you. Well, and just to remind you, you, you need to serve the tur turtle soup into something, so might as well use the shells. Oh, yeah. So thank you for, for providing nice the shells. Bowl. And cutting to Rick. <laughs> Did anybody else get a gargoyle vibe from this? Velvet. Yes, yep. sir. Uh, so thank you for coming in, guys. You know me. I'm Velvet J, a.k.a. Rich Davis on Facebook. I'm giving, uh, first of all, Leo, I totally approve of your bowls of turtle soup, and I love your dark humor. Thank You're you. a villain. I am, I am. I'm a villain, a dirty, rotten villain. I leave a trail of blood where I... Jack and Ape. So, that was actually a camp song my mom taught me that she, someone taught her one time. Anyway, um, so yeah, I give it a 3.8 um, in uh, bowls of uh, turtle soup, tor or tortuga soup, if you will. And, uh, yeah, so check us out on Splash Pages. Uh, definitely hit that like and subscribe on YouTube if you watch it there. If not, um, go there and just do it because it helps us out. And, uh, of course, check out our other interview, like I said earlier, with the great Drew Malo. And I was on camera, also with Mitch Whitfield. Um, and I think Leo is starting to drop some more of the great Rhode Island content that Drew and I obtained for you guys. So You're we welcome. love you. Uh, have a happy Thanksgiving. Stuff yeah. yourself with stuffing and mashed potatoes Probably. and apple pies and ice cream <laughs> and all that good stuff. And just gain some weight because it's the holiday. And, and don't forget to watch all yeah, the cool great Thanksgiving-themed movies Ooh. and cartoons. Those are just as important, everyone. We will be yep, putting... The one. Yeah. With the Dorkening, we'll be compiling a watch list. Of recommended things in case you get bored and you don't want to watch TV. Mr. Heat Miser. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're without a Santa Claus. Yep. Get out. Um, so we'll be putting that up. So keep in tuned. We're going to be holly and jolly because that's coming up. And um, Cowabunga. Catch Dude. you guys later. Okay, I don't know if it's going to end on my side. I uh, did the same thing last still night. Still going well. on my side. Yeah, it's still live.
Uh, that ought to hold the little SOBs. <laughs> so what- uh, Rich, do you want to hit end broadcast from your side? Or uh, Justin? Yeah, I can. <laughs> I look into